June, Sunday. I woke up this morning from dad telling me that I have to be at SPAG Union at 8am. This is going to really suck for me considering the circumstance surrounding yesterday's incident. Yesterday we were at Seth Snella's half birthday party and we were forced to go by mom. It would be my only summer vacation that I got to spend on and I failed my dad for not getting him out of that situation. What else am I supposed to do about that? Mom had told us all in the family that we have to go to Seth Snella's half birthday party. Besides, Dad had to act in front of Seth, and it turns out to be disgusting. You know what the worst part about it was? It happened right when I was about to grab the blanket on the branch that Manny chucked it over the railing. Long story short, my pants had dropped down and I was wearing my Wonder Woman underoos. I have a feeling that Manny must have done something yesterday because after Dad had accidentally farted on one of the guests, he rushed to the restroom to finish his business. Anyway, Dad's starting the car and I have to go now. During the car ride, I have to ask Dad a question that I'm not certain if it'll work. The question I've asked is that, if I sp spend my whole summer in Spag Union and I don't like it, may I quit the next summer? No son of mine is a quitter. Unfortunately, my dad doesn't understand me at all. The reason why he told me that I need to go to Spag Union is to not only man up, but to actually stop being a wimpy kid. That my dad sees me due to my recent actions. I felt bad that my dad doesn't like me as much as I used to think. When Dad dropped me off at Spag Union, Dad immediately drove away from the camp. I got in the entrance and I'm surprised to see George Fleer, Tyson Sanders, and a few other kids who I've encountered before. According to them, they were also sent by their parents just so that they could have more alone time, whatever that means. I'm sure their parents either want us to improve or they just hate our guts. The general gen then came over to tell us to put our stuff away and report to duty. After that, we just started our day like I expected. Hefley, stop thinking about sexy women and focus on our duties. No sir, uh, I wasn't. Saturday. I haven't written anything in my journal in a while. Yes, I said journal, not a diary. Anyway, it's been almost a week since I've written in anything at all. I'll try to keep it short explaining what's going on. On Monday, we were told to do some wrestling in order to prepare us for some sort of battle that we'd be, expe we'd be expecting to. It was tough for me to enjoy the whole thing. These guys show no mercy on a kid who's younger or the same age as me. I got some back pain as a result and I had to wrestle as much as until the general called it a day. I'm still feeling sore from the wrestling as a result, even when I'm currently escaping from Spag Union. Tuesday, we were told to do some running marathon and I wasn't able to keep up with the kids that have ran ahead of me. The general told me that I'm fat even though I don't look like those other fat kids who've managed to run ahead of me. It was horrible. Wednesday, we were going for a swim to see who can swim the fastest from one end of the pool to another. I don't like how it reminded me of the days when my dad made me join the swim team. Thursday, we had to do some lifting on a dumbbell, pulling, pushing, lifts, etc. This is like the time I was at in the gym, and let me tell you, that's a lot of work. My dad probably doesn't care if I suffer though, because this is as long as Spag Union makes me into a man that he wants me to see me as. Despite that, I've been playing football with the guys, and it seems like it's the only time that I can enjoy staying in Spag Union. The next day, however, it turns out to be more work for the military and I was forced to take a shower. It's kind of sad that despite the military portraying themselves as respecting one another as comrades, Spag Union is a whole different level. It's gotten to my breaking point that I want to commit a an AWOL. What? what? What does that mean? Somebody tell me in the comments. I, I, I don't know. I, I want to know. After all the horrific harassments that I've been receiving in the shower for being a frail and skinny like kid like a woman. There was a test coming up, and it doesn't bring my hopes up. After we're done with the test, we then got the homework to s get through because they want us to turn in before they could send us to a field trip. I just can't believe that the teacher said that coming out of his mouth. We were going to be sent to Afghanistan for a reconnaissance mission. I can't believe this. Spag Union is now sending us kids to go to a war to fight against the Afghan opposition. Did my dad even read the contract? Probably not. It's gotten so bad that there's only one person at night that'll help us get out of there. Albert Sandy. Albert Sandy is a guy in my school that talks about unverified rumors, like there's some guy in Asia that could jump six feet in the air, and it made sense at the time. Anyway, Albert suggests that we start digging with spoons because of what he sees in the movie. Well, it turns out that it's baloney because we've got spoons from the kitchen and we couldn't even make a dent in the floor at all. I've heard that Albert had a yogurt fetish too. Yeah, uh... If you, got, if you guys know, you know, but it's from the Yogurtverse series. I actually did read it on my channel. And, yeah, Greg's not going to pull a Shawshank Redemption. He's not getting out of there digging out a hole in the ground. 
I've tried to leave earlier than before since the first day of being in the SPAG union, but they won't allow anyone for any reason to leave at all, not even to see our family. After one of the adults had caught us banging our spoon on the floor, they then keep an eye on us to prevent us from escaping our military draft for the Afghanistan war. Looks like we'll just have to be on the lookout on Friday night, because I just want to leave as badly as the other kids were. Teddy Cad Cadwell had an idea to use the restroom. After that, he explains to us that the restrooms were well guarded to the point where there's no use of escaping. Subject approaching the quarter three boys' bathroom. After a while, the rest of the adults working in SPAG Union were sleeping on their job. A lot of kids my age were saying this is like prison, and people were talking about busting out and going home. Some of us, some of us were still awake, including me. Now it's our chance to escape this boot camp. We didn't encounter other kids with a similar idea of escaping SPAG Union, and unfortunately George Fleer thought that it was a good idea to chase people around with his belly button Audi. It was pretty terrifying because now the alarms had went off thanks to George. Thanks to the alarm, now all of the adults were awake and it's every man for himself. I ended up hiding in the music room with Tyson Sanders and the lights were off so no one would immediately come looking for us here. Tyson was worried that they were going to get caught by the adults soon. I told him that I'll look around to see if there's a place that we can hide deeper in the music room. I went to what would be the music closet. Instead, I found a secret basement. I was about to tell Tyson when I see others coming inside the music room. I went into the basement without him. I managed to lock the basement door behind me and hope that they didn't have the keys for it. I went downstairs and I heard it was about to be opened. Fortunately, they didn't have the keys to the basement. That was a relief. That's where I am now, writing in this journal. It's getting cold and I realize there might be a door somewhere. Bingo. I'm glad that I've learned a lesson from Rally Sleepover because I remember the time that I slept through the basement and I didn't realize that the coldness had came through a sliding glass door that was left open overnight. Despite the alarm going off outside Spag Union, I decided that it's best if I escape now rather than wait inside the basement until the alarm could cancel itself because they're going to unlock the door towards the basement soon. I took the chance to get outside and close the sliding door. I ran as fast as I could. Forget about Spag Union. I've closed the gate before, I would continue running for hours. I don't know what time it is, but I've been running very far from Spag Union for a long time. I managed to run from sunrise to sunset. I was quite a long distance that I've managed to run away from Spag Union. At least it's better than being drafted to an Afghan war. I don't know where I was, but I seen a shed I hadn't seen used in years. Better hide in there. I don't know what to expect when I managed to get inside that shed other than the just tools that fell into disuse. I was half right. I've seen the tools inside the shed. What I didn't expect was that the tools looked like it's a brand that they're brand new and that the shed inside looks quite clean. Someone must have used the shed recently as far as I could tell. With that in mind, I headed to the shed by closing the door. I walked around for a moment before realizing that there's another room inside that place. It was a bathroom with everything. I couldn't believe what I'm seeing. Then I heard someone whistling, and it was coming from right behind me. I turned to the showers to see who's in there, and that person came out of the shower reveals to be no, no other than Uncle Gary. I was totally speechless. I couldn't understand what he was doing taking a shower in a shed that's clean, but then Uncle Gary started talking. Uncle Gary admitted that he scammed people in another city because he was trying to sell his t-shirts that he got from Boston, but the police have attempted to arrest him for selling misleading shirts and being an unlicensed seller. He managed to only make an amount that's equal to a fast food meal. Kind of pathetic, really. Uncle Gary then got out his paintball gun and splatted towards their eyes and put on mouths in order to properly KO them. He then managed to put all of his unsold t-shirts into his old RV and drove away before the cops could call backup. Uncle Gary had driven to Hazardable Farms to hide his RV in the forest while he went into the shed that his brother told him about before. And that's how Uncle Gary got here. Uncle Gary then asked me the same thing. I told him a long story about how my dad forced me to join Spag Union in order to quote unquote become a man in the house. How Spag Union is drafting my comrades to the Afghan war and why I've managed to escape that place. I then get on my knees begging Uncle Gary to not send me back to Spag Union considering the fact that I've also be drafted into Afghanistan actually fighting in the war. Uncle Gary couldn't believe what he heard from me. He said that if he won't force me to go back to Spag Union if my parents would give me a chance of not going back. Uncle Gary then went in to put some clothes on for a few minutes before calling my parents. Uncle Gary then called my parents, asking if it's possible for me to not be in the Spag Union anymore if I was found alive. Unfortunately, my mom and dad refused to do so and he hung up. Uncle Gary believed me because he had a belief that sometimes the military has hidden agendas that's top secret. 
That's because he had heard stories from Grandpa regarding the era of Vietnam War on how the military tries to keep their actions secrets from the public. He then tells me that this is one of the times that I've witnessed their actions. Speaking of secrets, Uncle Gary also told me another secret. During the time he was a test subject for a company that made pepper spray, he accidentally found military secrets regarding ingredients for a potion that the company's been developing for them. He wrote it down and quit the job in the next few days. The potion ingredients that he had had was clearly a mysterious one. Uncle Gary doesn't know for sure on why the military would use certain ingredients for a potion. But then he suggests that if I drank that potion, I'll either become somebody else, be invisible, or be an animal. I'll be able to hide be being drafted from Spag Union. It's an unusual idea, but I'll try anything to get out of that. Uncle Gary went to his RV to get his ingredients and recipe that he written in a small notebook. Uncle Gary then bought his stuff inside the clean shed and set it up for a few minutes. After a half hour of cooking later, Uncle Gary made a potion. I was encouraged to try it, and I did just that. At first it gave me long hair, thus giving me an impression that I had become somebody else. Then I felt my body had been transformed into an actual woman, causing me to scream like a girl. Uncle Gary was impressed to say the least. I've asked Uncle Gary on why does the potion turn me into a girl. In addition to stating the obvious, he admits that it's not possible to just drink the same thing he made in a potion and expect to turn myself back to normal. If anything, it doesn't work anymore once I drank it. I'm starting to feel concerned about this whole ordeal that I'm going through. If I had a penny for every time Greg got turned into a girl, I'd have three pennies, which isn't like that much, but it's kind of weird that this happened three times now. Anyway. Uncle Gary admits that the original expectation for a potion to work is that he wants me to be invisible because if I stay invisible like forever, then I don't have to worry about the consequences for the rest of my life, including getting into the girl's locker. Okay, yeah, no, Greg, you're a freak, bro. You, you, why would you say that? You need to be put on a list. You need to get sent to prison if that's the first thing you think about, like, being invisible. Like, me personally, like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I'm just start stealing stuff. I'm be honest. Like, I'm not going to be doing none of that creepy stuff if I was invisible. Just saying. Uncle Gary also acknowledges that if I went missing for a very long time, there's a chance that I'd be declared dead in absentia, and that would be negatively in affected the family, including himself. I'm surprised that Uncle Gary cared about me. This guy is cool despite having issues. We were getting tired and Uncle Gary decided that we'll talk more tomorrow. I agree that it's getting late, so we decided to go to bed in his RV for the night. Unfortunately, Uncle Gary usually has nightmares that keep him awake in the middle of the night, and tonight was no exception. There's Donkey Kong in the mall. Fight monkey monks in the stall. Sunday. In the morning, Uncle Gary apologized to me about what happened last night. It's about his nightmare and the reason why he had it is because one time, Uncle Gary accidentally fed a small potion that spilled towards the spider and drank it. In a few moments, he heard monkey noises inside the walls. Had I known that before, I wish I hadn't drank it. Sigh. I wish I could go to the beach with my family instead of going into hiding after escaping from Spag Union. That really stings because I was looking forward to it this summer. I'm finally tall enough to go on the Cranium Shaker. It's a really awesome ride that's on a boardwalk thanks to Roderick. Roderick's been on the ride hundreds of times. He says you, can, you can't call yourself a man until you ride it. Well, I'll show him when I could ride the Cranium Shaker to show him. I'm worthy. Anyway, Uncle Gary and I were discussing about the implications coming from the potion that he had made from yesterday. We've come to an agreement that someone else needs to replace me. Uncle Gary also told me that I need a new name since I've turned into a girl. Calling, my, calling myself Greg would be very inappropriate. I've come up with names that I've been that would be really close to my original name. I came up with Greta because I read it in a comic book once, where the heroine has that name and she could kick some butt. Uncle Gary thinks it's a good name too. It does have similarities with the given name I have. While eating breakfast with Uncle Gary, there was a knock on the door. Uncle Gary decides to open the door, and it turned out to be a bunch of police officers. We were shocked that one of us would end up being taken away by them. Thankfully, the officers were asking if they had seen me. Uncle Gary denies it, and the officers told him to keep an eye out for him, as he's a young missing person from the Spag Union camp. Uncle Gary nodded, and the cops were on their way. Uncle Gary then told me that we have to come up with a huge plan that can result in a huge payoff. Count me in. First, Uncle Gary decided that he had to call someone else in order for me to be dropped off at home. It's just so that no one gets suspicious of either me or Uncle Gary, as if I go home, I might not only admit to my family that I'm Greg, but I've turned myself into a girl, which is even worse, considering the situation that I've gone through with Spag Union. Uncle Gary then called someone, explaining the current situation of what's going on and giving details about the whole plan. 
I just hope that I could trust whoever's on the line with us. Seriously, Uncle Gary, him? My hopes were dashed when I found out who's picking me up. Long story short, Uncle Gary is Roderick's technician setup, made by Mum because she wants Uncle Gary to have an actual job instead of relying on those lotto tickets that he got addicted on, hoping that he'll win a million dollars from. I want to bet it's a long ride to home, and Roderick's going to spend every single minute of it talking. Can my day get any worse? Not only Roderick knows about this, but his bandmates Bill, Walter, Drew, and Ward know about it as well. One time I had my secrets out from Roderick, and fortunately my secret had turned into an entirely different gossip altogether. Then Roderick decided that he wanted to go through the speed bumps for fun, before Bill tells him to stop due to a serious situation that they're dealing with, not only me, but Uncle Gary as well. Roderick complied with his wish and he drove straight home. When we were home, I was forced into Roderick's basement and I had to explain to them about what happened yesterday. I explained to them just about everything. We were being drafted towards the war to Afghanistan and that's when I had enough. After that, the band debated about what the next step should be regarding my well-being. Roderick wants me to be his girlfriend while others want, want the same thing. Okay, yeah, no. Bro, this whole family needs to be locked up because what the hell. Roderick, that ain't it, bro. That's your bro that's your sister. I don't even know what to say. I told him that since I do live here, I had to stay with Roderick. I added that Uncle Gary has a plan regarding the mess that we've made. They were okay with this entire plan. Roderick said that it's time for his band to practice and they all headed out of the basement. I decided that I have to go with them so that just so I can introduce myself as Roderick's quote-unquote girlfriend towards Mom, Dad, and Manny. That way it won't be awkward for them when they see me inside the house. I met Mom and Dad and they weren't feeling too happy about seeing Roderick having a girlfriend so soon. They apologized for the lack of enthusiasm due to their son Greg having gone missing from Spag Union and they hoped to find him alive. I understand mom and dad. Roderick and I left them for practice. There wasn't anything too special about loaded diaper and practicing their music. They weren't that good and they're not performing seriously. It's a mess when you listen to it. Monday. Yesterday was uneventful and I forgot to write something important about myself. To the loaded diaper band, I've introduced myself as Greta. However, when I introduced myself as Greta towards mom and dad, I was worried that I might get caught thanks to how similar it is to my old name. However, they didn't think twice about the name I chose. However, I decided I had to come up with a different last name if they were gonna if they try to assume that I'm familiar towards them. I chose Williams with an S because it's from my dad's maternal grandpa. So now I've chosen myself a full name, Greta Williams. Anyway, I had to sleep in the laundry room last night because I wasn't allowed to go back to my room and get caught by anyone from them. Today's the day I'm gonna attempt to raid my mom's room for her clothes because when I try and wear my clothes, it doesn't feel right or doesn't fit me anymore. The result of the raid was somewhat of a success. I was able to find some clothes that mom hasn't worn in years. Thank goodness I can wear her old, old clothes. Usually I'm never satisfied of what I'm wearing if it comes to hand-me-downs, since I've used to wear Roderick's old clothes while Manny got new ones. But since I'm in a situation where I need girls' clothes, this is all I got. Anyway, I decided to head out to go visit Rowley, but they were out for the day. All of a sudden, I never thought that a really cute girl I'd never seen before walked up to me and introduced herself. She said her name was Trista and that she just moved in down the street. I introduced myself as Greta Williams, and we talked about this neighborhood. I gave her advice regarding a cer certain neighbors. Trista is thankful that she got info of a neighborhood from me. Trista then walked away from me, and this gave me an idea. Hopefully it could work out real nice, though. Rowley's family belongs to a country club, and he's allowed to bring two guests to his pool every day. This could work out real nice with Trista and I lounging on the pool while Rowley ogles on. If there's one person that could hold me back, it would be Roderick, and I have to come up with a plan on getting rid of him that way. He won't be able to reveal my secret. On second thought, I decided against it since I failed to pr properly bury the time cancel and capsule I ended up digging up for it out of pure desperation. If Roderick ever decided to reveal my secret, just like the time he did after a failed recording at school, he's going to owe me big time. While it's true that the details got messed up at school, I'm not going to let this secret go. This secret is a lot more severe than the time that I accidentally got trapped in the Leisure Towers women's restroom for an hour and a half. For that secret, I thought I was going to be teased, but thankfully it didn't happen. This secret, however, would end up with me getting bullied if it ever came out, and I don't want it. Besides, the only other reason I can't get rid of Roderick is because his bandmates and Uncle Gary know about this. The latter is pretty mutual, but I do wish Uncle Gary chose someone else instead of Roderick and his bandmates. The former, I'm not sure how far they will be able to keep this kind of secret from people. 
Anyway, I kind of needed to I kind of needed to head back to my house to see mom's calling and dad at work with updates on everything that's going on around the house. Mom's not really helping improve dad's mood because she calls him at work about five times a day. That's excessive. Guess what Manny did in the party today? Guess, guess. Anyway, after mom's done talking on the phone, she had to introduce Manny to me. I've told him that I'm Greta Williams, Roderick's girlfriend. Manny just called me Bubby. Mom said that Manny does that because he misses his older brother. Yeah, right. Tuesday. Mom has been using the photos that she's taken from her album and puts it on the missing child poster everywhere in plain view. It's clear that the photos that she uses are just random pictures of me ranging from a young age to a current age. When mom uses any photo that has me in it, she's actually getting desperate on trying to end the search sooner just to get people to care about the situation. I hope I could come out to come out clean to mom someday because I wanted her to understand about the spag union situation that I've dealt with. Anyway, I went into the kitchen and she commented about how my hair is shaggy. She then told me she then took me to the bombshells beauty salon so I could quote unquote impress Roderick. You. I'm not talking about the salon itself. In fact, the experience wasn't that bad. There's TVs to watch while getting a haircut. Yeah, there's tabloids to read about despite mom saying it's full of lies, but what else could I actually do while waiting in a beauty salon? Besides, grandma reads them and every time my mom sees those tabloids in her house, she takes them home with them, her and throws it away in the garbage. It was a long wait in the salon, but I didn't mind. When it was finally my turn, the best part about the beauty salon was the gossip. The ladies who work there know the dirt on just about everyone in town. It was a close call, when they're talking about Spag Union with a lot of details being messed up. A kid was stripping for solars at Spag Union and the cooker went missing from that place, causing to escape. The mess missing member may have escaped from playing you with her and lived another life. Wow, that's messed up. Unfortunately, mom came to pick me up right almost at the end of where a soldier from Spag Union might live with a hooker at a place where I couldn't hear at the end. The ladies at Bombshells introduced me to a soap opera, and I'm totally hooked thanks to them. Mom doesn't feel the same about it, sadly. She prefers if I hang out with Roderick for support. But Marissa, I I love you. Girlfriend, you could do so much better than him. Wednesday. In the early morning around 6.30 a.m., the phone had rang. Ranged? Ringed? Rung? Both Roderick and I realized that it might be Uncle Gary, and we tried to pick it up. But Mom got there first. Someone had hung up, and we hoped that Mom would put the phone down. We decided to redial the number back. We tried to stop her, but failed. Mom was really confused when she realized who the number was, because it was revealed that it's really Uncle Gary who called us early in the morning. Mom wants to know if it's because of Greg. Gary, Gary, is that why you're calling us? Is that why? Uncle Gary couldn't try to deny that he actually found Greg that was running away near the Hazardable Farms when he's out at the woods. Mom was overjoyed that Greg had been found. Mom couldn't wait to tell Dad about this. I hope Uncle Gary and I can have a serious talk about the implications being done here. Hours later, Uncle Gary had arrived with quote-unquote Greg, and my parent enjoyed, parents were overjoyed to see him. I'm sorry for running away from Spag Union, Mom and Dad. Honestly, I would never apologize for running away from Spag Union because of the aforementioned draft. Uncle Gary then asked if he could go to the basement to talk to Roderick regarding the business of Loaded Diaper. My parents accepted his request and he proceeded to go. Uncle Gary then met Roderick, his crew, and I in the basement and told us how he found Greg and how it will affect the overall plan. It all started when he saw a kid running into the woods, looking very similar to me. Uncle Gary has a tranquilizer done and shoots him in the leg. Okay, well, no, what is with this family, bro? This family, a bunch of, like, schools, close the schools. Because, like, w w what is this? Like, why does he casually have a, I mean, it is America. I mean, something about, I feel like, kind of hot take, but I feel like it's just, it's kind of creepier to have a tranquilizer gun than, like, a normal gun. I don't know why. That's messed up, though. According to Uncle Gary, that kid's name is Otis Watson, and he picked him up when he was about to put to sl go to sleep. When Otis woke up, Uncle Gary was about to give him a haircut as a barber and held Otis hostage until Uncle Gary got his demands from Otis of being in his entire plan. Uncle Gary empathized that he really did not tell Otis about my gender-bending problem at all. Uncle Gary told him that he needs to be Greg Hefley because Greg was bullied at Spag Union for coming out as a punk. Don't ask me why he came up with that either. Uncle Gary proposed that we've solved the problem of finding quote unquote Greg Hefley as a replacement of me. I should be the one to go with him to the trailer and live out either for the rest of my life or till he may somehow made an antidote to the problem. 
Instead, I asked Uncle Gary if I could stay here for one more day to really hang out with Roderick, my old best friend for one last time before I could go back to living with Uncle Gary. Roderick agreed with me considering the fact that I did try to visit him yesterday, but he wasn't there. Uncle Gary thought about it and said yes. Uncle Gary then told me that he would be here by Friday and not tomorrow due to dealing with maintenance for his old RV. Uncle Gary had left and I just wanted to go see Rowley. When I got to Rowley's house, I introduced myself as Roderick's girlfriend, and he seemed baffled for a moment. I explained to him that Greg was found today and he suggested I hang out with Rowley to deal with the loss. I really did it just for Rowley. See, I'm surprised Greg's like this unselfish because like, usually he's like a psychopath who's always like really mean to Rowley. I wanted to hang out with him at his home, but Rowley insisted that we could go to Greg's home because he wanted to say goodbye to him before he left for Spag Union once again. I let him have it since I don't want to raise any suspicions to anyone regarding my real former identity. No, I didn't even get to say goodbye to Greg. When we arrived at my house, it was too late. The fake me had been taken out by Dad. My dad was not too happy about the situation while Roderick is crying for the fake me being, or Rowley is crying for the fake me being taken away without saying goodbye. Manny was just laughing at the fake me being taken away. The whole thing is quite sad. Honestly, I feel bad for Rowley. We've been best friends for quite a while and I ended up wondering if I'm going to reveal to him on who I am. I know he's not good at keeping secrets whenever I'm getting in trouble with someone like the time I joked about Shrog being invisible and he tells my mom about it. I was not happy that Rowley did that. Thinking deeper, I probably shouldn't come out to him as it would very likely damage our friendship and it'll take a while to fix it. That'll be the best case scenario. At worst, it's irreparable. <sighs> it would be nice to give Rowley the benefits that he deserves. Whoa! Pause! What, what does he mean by that? Am I, am I the only one? Okay, you know what? I'm just move on. I'm pretending he didn't say that. I'm hoping he's talking about something else and not what I'm thinking of, but I'm just move on. Then Roderick could come over to us in the kitchen. Roderick was about to tell us something when suddenly he got a phone call from someone. Roderick then told us to leave. After Roderick put the phone away, he told us that he had to go to Bill's house for a band practice because tomorrow they're going to be hosting a concert somewhere in Plainview. Mom asked if Rowley and I would like to come support him. Roderick declined for obvious reasons and he left for practice at Bill's house. I then talked to Rowley if he would like to look around Roderick's room after he'd left. Rowley obliged and he, didn't, he went to look around his room for possible secrets that he's been hiding from us. Well, it looks like we found something. It's a little souvenir picture keychain you get at the beach. And somehow, Roderick had a picture with some girl. I acted jealous in front of Rowley to avoid any suspicion that Rowley might find out. I don't know who that girl was because I've seen him on every single family vacation except a week, except a week in Spag Union. If I saw him with that girl, I definitely would have remembered her. I asked Rowley who's that girl that Roderick's with, and he said that he didn't know that, and that I'm jealous. I've expected that response from Rowley perfectly. I took a deep breath before I continued on searching for something else, because I'm actually glad I can't, couldn't really trust Roderick, due to my older brother having some secrets. Anyway, Rowley and I continued to look around Roderick's room. After digging some more through Roderick's junk drawer, we found a comedic movie at the bottom of Roderick's drawer. Neither of us actually had seen a PG-13 comedy movie before because my mom only let me, let me watch G-rated movies, which sucks for me. As for Rowley, if his dad didn't allow any violent games, then I'm betting that his dad had similar rules regarding movies as well. I asked Rowley if he wanted to spend the night here. Rowley said that if, as long as we watch the movie, he'll be alright. Then I asked mom if Rowley and I could spend the night in Roderick's basement, and she said yes. I made sure dad's out of the room before I could ask mom because dad doesn't like it when I have sleepovers on a quote-unquote work night where we've gone into trouble last night. For the night, Rowley and I waited for mom, dad, and Manny to go to bed. But then mom had come downstairs with Manny planning to sleep alongside us. I did not want Manny for the night at all. The last time it happened, he snitched on me. Rowley had a bunch of candy and soda. The TV was already inside Roderick's room. We were all set for the night when unfortunately mom had to bring Manny downstairs, asking us to watch for the night. Seriously, I had enough with Manny at this point. Look who came to join the sleepover with you two. Hi Bubby and Wowie. I asked mom to tell Manny to stop calling me Bubby because I'm not Greg. Or at least I'm not Greg anymore. Mom just defends him for saying that he misses Greg a lot. Sure keep defending him woman. I'm not gonna let the sleepover be ruined by him once again. Once mom went back upstairs, I came up with an immediate plan. 
I told Roderick, Ra I told Rally to let Manny have all of his candies. I apologize to Rally for that because I'm planning to bring the treats downstairs. Rally understood while I head back upstairs to the kitchen. We got upstairs and went into the kitchen. I needed something that could put Manny out once and for all and not have the sleepover be ruined thanks to him. He's gonna kill him? I, it was just a sleepover. Oh my god, Greg, it's not that deep. I checked the fridge to see if there's anything I could find. I found a juice that Manny can drink from and gave me an idea. My parents had prescription pills inside their kitchen cabinets, and honestly, I'd rather poison Manny just to teach him a lesson on being a real snitch than last time I had a sleepover with Rally. I got to work crushing and mixing. When I'm done doing so, I made sure that my parents weren't around as well as Manny. Luckily, they weren't around. I poured the glass juice in the glass that is intended for Manny, and I brought the rest of the juice down as well so I could go and get more cups later. Here's your juice, Manny. Drink up so I could clean up when you're done. Can you please go get some more cups, Greg? I'm or Greta. I'm thirsty too, you know. I told Rally to hold the juice while I got some more cups for us to drink with. I went upstairs, hoping that a lot of unused prescription pills would knock him out cold. Let me clear things up. Roderick may not be a good brother, but at least he knows not to snitch on mom and dad because I did something wrong, whereas Manny would do that. I'm scared of Manny knowing too much about the truth regarding me. Regarding why dad sent me to Spag Union, yeah, I think he's going to strongly punish me if he thinks out about, finds out about that. Mom would just be complacent and tolerate dad strongly punishing me. So you guys, like, I'm logical. Like, I'm saying, like, I think you should poison Frank. He seems like the problem to me. Just saying. Anyway, after I got two more cups, Rally tried to hold the juice away from Manny. Manny was about to cry out over the juice and not letting Mom deal with that. I told Rally to pour one more cup for him, and he complied. Rally poured one more cup to Manny, and we only had our cups filled to half. A few minutes later, Manny passed out on the floor while playing some board games with both of us. I lifted Manny up to the bed tonight. After I sent Manny to bed upstairs, I made sure that Mom and Dad were asleep. It seems to me that they're in a deep sleep because I heard them snoring a lot. It's a good sign that I went back downstairs to finally watch a movie that Rally and I found inside Roderick's drawer. The movie was about a detective who was hired to find the missing dolphin. The clue was, a, a, was from a ring and it belonged to one of the football players. Almost all of them have their ring intact, but one. The movie is hilarious. It's pretty ridiculous for Ace to go to a mental hospital to find more about a football player, but I enjoyed that movie until the revelations near the end. The end shows it's a missing football player disguising as a police woman, and it scares me. I'm gonna end up, I'm gonna end up being found out in a humiliating way. I hope it doesn't come to that. I turned off the TV, and Rally told me that he likes the movie. Rally said that it was a funny movie, and his parents wouldn't let him watch it if they knew the ratings. He said that his parents only let him watch movies up to PG rating. This makes my parents more old-fashioned than Rally's, and I'm jealous of that. Anyway, we went to sleep for the rest of the night. Thursday. Roderick was back from band practice yesterday. He said that the concert would be held at a country club where Rally's family went to. We were excited. Mom and Dad, however, refused to go with Manny. It did not feeling good, and they were they had to take him to the doctor today. At least my parents won't be a problem for now. I suggested to Rally if we could invite over Trista to the country club, and Rally wasn't enthusiastic about inviting her again. Due to her inviting once before, and Trista ended up talking to the lifeguard for the rest of his time in the country club. Well, that kind of stinks, since Trista is quite a nice girl in the neighborhood. Rally told me he'd rather have me over to the country club, because I've shown interest in him. He's hoping that I'll spend more time with him. Honestly, I'm okay with that, since I do have a crush on him. Oh my. No time to think about that. I gotta get my swimsuit that fits me, since my old one doesn't align with my new gender anymore. I decided to raid my mom's closet one more time before I could go with Rally. After that, we've headed to the country club where we change our clothes. Uh, when we're done with that, we decide to sunbathe ourselves. Uh, after we're done sunbathing for what seemed like hours, we went around to the country club. Strangely, it still felt like I have a thing with women despite my new gender. I decided to humor with Rowley for that reason, alone. I hope Rowley finds my humor, humor funny because his dad sure didn't. Hello, ladies. Bro, Greg, you should be put on a list, I'm not gonna lie. Rally's dad took me aside for a moment and gave me a warning regarding the country's club policies of harassing women. He added that if I did it again, I'd be kicked out of the country club. I tried to defend it that it was I was doing it for a joke and Rowley found it funny, but he insisted that I should treat and respect women the way I wanted to be treated. 
I apologize not only to the ladies, but also to Rally. Rally didn't find the joke offensive, considering that I'm a girl who jumped into flirt with the, with women in a way that boys do. I'm just glad that I was at least I I was at least given one more chance from his dad. If I was Greg, I would have been already out of the country club, and at least now I know better about the policy. So Greg, like you thought I was like chill, like that you you you, you, you think you're, what's Greg saying? He's pretty much if the policy wasn't there, he wouldn't have been right back at it. See this? Ah, uh, no comment. Moving on. We decided to go check on Roderick and his loaded diaper band to see if they're playing one of their songs. Who's ready to rock? I am. Why I didn't expect to see is Uncle Gary and Shira Gupta in the country club. I guess I can understand why they're here. It's obviously it's obvious that Uncle Gary had technically worked for Roderick, but Mum made Uncle Gary do it, and she'll pay to support Uncle Gary if he supports Roderick and the loaded diaper band as a whole. I'm surprised that Shirag is in the country club, considering the fact that his dad had owned a small business and made some profit. I'm quite impressed that his dad still had made some money. After the band was done playing, we had a feast where we ended up partying through the entire evening. It was a great day. When, we're done, when we were done for the day, I asked Uncle Gary to let me go back home first with Roderick to not only say goodbye to Rally, but also get my clothes and pack my stuff. Uncle Gary agreed, and when we headed home, I said my goodbyes to Rally and Roderick dropped him off at home. He's really happy and I'm sadly going to miss him. When I got home, I quickly went into the basement to get only clothes because I didn't want to en encounter Manny and his parents who might suspect what I've done to him. Sunday. Well, I'm back at Uncle Gary's RV. For the last two days, so not much has been happening due to Uncle Gary still hiding from the cops that he's encountered while selling his t-shirts. As for me, I was trying my best to act really girly as much as possible out of fear of social ostracism by girls who are the same age as me. I needed to prepare with the possibility of trying to be a popular girl at Westmore Middle School. Hold on. Hold on. So wait, 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 wait. Susan and, Susan and Frank just think it's okay that Roderick's dating a middle school girl? PSA, if you're in high school, you should not be going anywhere near middle school. If you are, a, a, realistically, if you are in your 10th grade, 11th grade, or 12th grade, maybe not 10th grade, but really, you should not even be dating, like, freshmen, like, that, I'm just saying, like, that's a PSA, 10th grade is kind of fine, I guess, but anything higher than that, you should be put on a list, I'm sorry, that is not okay, just saying, anyway, moving on, speaking of fashion, I've gotten, into, into new, I've gotten some new clothes from Uncle Gary, thanks to mom realizing that her old clothes were stolen, she called him this morning, morning and the conversation didn't go so well. You better tell Greta that she needs to give me my clothes back, or else I'll report this incident to the police. No, please don't. Greta's family is very poor. They need clothes to get by. Please reconsider, Susan. Susan. Uncle Gary managed to tell Susan that Roderick's my connection to financial stability issues. According to Mom, that's how I became his girlfriend, after realizing that serious issue. Mom then said that I could keep the clothes as long as I'm Roderick's girlfriend, and that any breakup would have to be paid back with cash. I have to go along with the idea of being Roderick's girlfriend instead of Rally's. Honestly, I'm not too proud of that idea, but I'll admit this. I'll be paying back them if my secret isn't out under any condition and I'd be free to be Rally's girlfriend. Oh wait, what am I thinking here? At least I don't have to worry about being Roderick's girlfriend if anymore if I do that. Back to the topic. On Saturday, Uncle Gary decided to have a talk with me. It was about why he, bro why he broke some laws in order to get what he wanted and how it caused a serious rift before between the whole Hefley family. There's not too much to do in his RV, so I ended up listening to one of his stories. Uncle Gary was in Crossland High School back then, and there was a girl he liked. Her name was Jennifer Matthews, and she had a boyfriend named Hector Smith who was a football player that he disliked for his jock-related personality. One day, there was an incident that made him want to be Jennifer's new boyfriend. This is what you get. This is what you deserve for forgetting to make me a sandwich for my practice game, Jennifer. Stop whining. Okay, that that's, that that was that, that's, this is like the most like offensive possible thing like ever. Like I, YouTube, please don't copy straight this. I do not believe in hitting women or uh, them being in the kitchen. Anywho, after Jennifer got in trouble with Hector, Uncle Gary has approached her to ask if she's all right. Uncle Gary said that she's okay, but Uncle Gary was not okay with seeing how Hector treats his girlfriend. Uncle Gary then came up with a plan on how to get Hector in a lot of trouble while also getting revenge on him. First, it took Uncle Gary three months to win Jennifer over, over him by simply befriending her and caring about her well-being. Secondly, he spied on Hector for two weeks and found some potential ways to get him in a lot of trouble. 
and first Uncle Gary knows that Hector got a low grade from one of his teachers and he decided to throw a lot of toilet paper around and egg the teacher's house when he found out where she lived. Uncle Gary framed it as Hector being the one doing it over a low grade. Uncle Gary poured a lot of alcohol into Hector's water bottle and put some beer cans in his backpack during practice. His coach found out about that and Hector was off the football team. Finally, Uncle Gary then decided to steal not only his girlfriend, but his new gaming console as well. It's not just any 16-bit game console that he stole at the time. It was a Neo Geo console that he stole from Hector Smith. Uncle Gary claimed that since he's an athlete, why would he have time to play video games? After that, Uncle Gary was able to play some games on it at night after everyone inside his house went to sleep. It wasn't until one Thanksgiving that one of our family members caught him playing games at night. It was none other than his girlfriend, Jennifer. Uncle Gary came clean to everyone in the family and they'd lost their minds. The Heffley family were divided on the issue of Uncle Gary regarding his morals. While most were united on the front regarding what he stole, his reasonings are divided. Gammy's mother is the tiebreaker to use the status of her being the oldest one in the Heffley family at the time. She ended up supporting Uncle Gary out of losing some of her old friends to domestic violence in her lifetime. I was pretty sad. Gammy's mother then attempted to settle the debate with every Hafley family on what to do in the situation. They were, baiting, they were debating about it and they came up with two major conditions. One, get rid of the Neo Geo console, one way or another. Two, break up with Jennifer Matthews due to un how undeserving Uncle Gary had gotten away with having a girlfriend from underhanded tricks. No, okay, I wouldn't say that's un un underhanded tricks. That's more like W game, like low key. Like he befriended her fair and square. He didn't like blackmail her or something. Like, low-key, like, he saved her. Like, low-key, no, nah, like, she kind of fur the streets. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like, kind of. Because, like, realistically, if she's trying to break up just over this, like, she realistically, she's kind of ungrateful in this situation, not Uncle Gary. I'm just saying. Like, she, I'm not saying she a red flag. Like, I'm trying to, I'm kind of, I'm channeling my inner flight reacts right now. Like, I'm I'm not saying everything's a red flag, but low-key, like, Gammy's kind of a red flag for this. I'm not going to lie, because, like, Really, Uncle Gary's in the right here completely, I'm just saying. Anywho, Uncle Gary wasn't happy. He was prepared to sell the Neo Geo console away from Plainview in order to avoid suspicion of being stolen, but he wasn't willing to break up with Jennifer. Jennifer, in fact, prefers Uncle Gary over Hector Smith out of how he changed her views regarding life and defended him for saving her from dating violence. See, no, nah, no, nah, Loki has a green flag, Jennifer's a green flag, but brought the Heffley family tripping. The Hefley family was not convinced. In fact, Chester Remus Hefley warned that if Uncle Gary kept dating Jennifer, he'd be banned for the Hefley family events as long as they lived. Uncle Gary and Jennifer then left with the former carrying the Neo Geo console. Both were feeling quite sad back then. Jennifer, I'm really sorry for what I've done to you. I just don't want you to get hurt by Hector anymore. He stole his Neo Geo because he's an asshole. Gary, it's okay. I'm the one who's dumb here. Should have left Hector a long time ago. It changed my life for the better. Grateful to be with you since when. After all that, Jennifer then told Uncle Gary that she'll be moving away in December. Since he hasn't seen her, I seriously, seriously felt bad for Uncle Gary. Hector is a dick. I asked Uncle Gary if he stole the Neo Geo console. Uncle Gary confirmed selling it at Boston as he didn't want to be targeted by Hector. He was able to sell it for $150 and gave his girlfriend half before she moved away. That's about $75 he had for himself. That explains his crimes and how he hurt the family. Before I could ask any more questions to Uncle Gary about his story, Uncle Gary got a call from Mum, telling me to come to Roderick's house immediately. Uncle Gary commented that it sounded serious, and so we headed off back to where I used to live. That's quite a nice change of pace. I take it back. When I arrived, Mum was holding something, and she was not happy about it. Mum had an official-looking paper with the Coventry Club logo on it. It was a bill for the feast that the loaded diaper crew had eaten, and included Rally as well. The total was $483. Holy crap, that's a lot to be paid off. Luckily, Mom said that we have to pay $69 each. That's a relief, but still. I didn't expect the one to be paying for it, because I thought that Roderick loaded diaper or Uncle Gary had covered for us. Mom said that Roderick, his band, Uncle Gary, and even Rally agreed to pay at least $69 for our expediture regarding the feast in the country club. I don't think anyone should discuss about would I don't think anyone discussed this. Tuesday. Rally and I ended up having to discuss about the situation yesterday. 
Rowley said that his dad and my mom agreed to split the bill fairly so that no one gets away for not paying for anything. Rowley and the loaded diaper band, Roderick and the loaded, loaded, loaded diaper band agreed it's fair enough for all of them. Uncle Gary thought it's unfair since he didn't want to pay anything, but has to out of debt. Rowley and I ended up uh, ended up trying to rack ideas on how we could both pay off $69, but ended up de delving into a full-blown argument over issues with one of us paying double while one doesn't have to. Work ethics regarding pay and our time of spending summer. Rowley then just left my house. Dang, that kid knows how to break someone's heart. Anyway, I decided I had to do something about my debt from the country club. I was Then I remembered about the beauty salon barber talking about a hooker in Spag Union. I have thoroughly decided that I was desperate enough if it means keeping my parents in the dark about my dark secret. So I went around town to see if there's any way I could become a stripper just for a week. Yeah, I know the risk, but as a girl, it's, ne it's an easy way to make some dough. If I was Greg, my parents would never allow that kind of idea at all. Wait, why was he considering this as a Greg? Yeah, no comment. In fact, they would never let me work, do more work in the summer with Rally having zero experience on any serious stuff. I ended up finding a place where a lot of girls were lining up. Whoever's next in line, come up on next. Hold on a second. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Why, why, why is there multiple middle school girls in this line? You know what, bro? This, this whole city's ghetto is hell. I'm sorry. What is this? Bro, everybody needs to get locked up. Just throw any everybody in jail, because ain't no way. I was next in line, and I found out who the manager was. Jordan Jury. Jordan Jury is the most popular kid in the grade above me, and he started asking some questions about my experience. Hold on, why is he a, he's a pimp in 7th grade? I don't even know what to say. I told him that I was a dancer before, but I never danced on a pole. Jordan then told me I'm hired and I should start now. I just did that, and not only did I make more than $69, but I managed to double that for Rowley, if he wants to be friends with me again after all, which I've usually come to expect for him. I still care about him, despite our turbulent friendship. I don't even know if he really wants to go on a date with me. I do like him. After my first day at work, I went home where I had enough money to pay off both Rowley and I do too, Mom. I pray that my mom doesn't ask any questions where I got the money from. The last thing I want is for mom to shut down the club. Bro, that's the first thing I wanted to do, bro. Susan, please shut that joint down. Luckily, my mom didn't ask anything about where I got it from, but I do admit I have leftovers for myself. I'll save it for my birthday since it would be about 11 more days to go. I went downstairs to Roderick's basement and he was practicing drums as usual. I had to at least wait before I could either call Uncle Gary at night to pick me up or Roderick's son playing the drums so he could go. The latter has happened as he didn't want me out of the house for any reason out of concern. Speaking of concern, I've heard that Manny was feeling all better thanks to a lot of donors that came to the hospital. When Manny's cured, Mom and Dad had secretly taken the money away from the donors due to wanting to send money to a private school instead of a public school where he would usually go according to Roderick. It drives me insane that Manny is rich since he also has to earn 50 cents from Mom and Dad every time he uses the potty without being asked. At least it explains why he carries around a gallon of water with him at all times, and he keeps all of his money in a big jar on a dresser that has around $150 in it. I've thought about asking M Manny for a loan like Roderick does when it comes to hosting his band somewhere for a price, but decided not to out of attempts of knocking Manny out. Besides, I've heard he could charge loans in a way that's extremely high interest rates. From what I've heard around school, there was a kid that Manny supposedly dealt with a $60 loan. That kid owes him 50% more of the loan, totaling up to $90. The kid didn't pay back, and as a result, Manny had not only slashed, splashed red paint on the door, wrote OSPS in the graffiti, but only also beat the family's dog to near death. That kid's mother is so enraged about how they had to pay the loan to Manny that she ended up arguing with Mum. Long story short, Manny was kicked out of preschool and my parents had to research for a private school to send Manny to, bro, send him to an asylum or an institution. This guy does not deserve to be, like, near civilization. It's actually a slap in the face on us due to how we're raised. Writing this, it makes me glad that I didn't owe Manny anything. Besides, I've heard Roderick has trouble securing payment from legitimate organizers who wanted Loaded Diaper to be playing at their place due to their genre of music. Well, I've arrived back to Uncle Gary's RV and he drove away. I've slept through the night and hope that it all went, goes well tomorrow. Saturday. Today was my birthday, and I didn't expect to be excited this year due to how I was changed into a girl. Speaking of that, I haven't written much due to its lack of noteworthiness for the past few days, other than some interesting stuff here and there. Let me try and write and draw about what I've experienced. 
On Sunday, Uncle Gary asked if I was ready to pay off the debt. I truthfully answered how I got the money. Uncle Gary then admitted that he couldn't pay off $69 out of not being able to hold a steady job and that Roderick would temporarily postpone his payment until quote-unquote further notice, which validates my opinion on him. Uncle Gary asked if I could also cover $69 for him because when he tried to get a job, he only got menial jobs that are only temporarily available for a few days. I initially rejected his offer, but sold me on getting whatever I want on a bir- as, a, as a birthday gift as long as it's a reasonable gift and he'll kiss my feet over me. I accepted the former but rejected the latter for obvious reasons. While I am glad that Uncle Gary would offer something of what I want for my birthday, unfortunately there are gifts that I actually do want, but I must rule out of the two. One of them is a pet dog, but ever since I asked my parents for it, sadly I couldn't have a dog. I wanted a dog for three years, but my parents said that Manny had to be completely potty trained before getting one. With him running the potty training racket, this could take a long time. Besides, what's unfortunate is that Uncle Gary is way too poor to afford one. Even if he somehow manages to get one, I'd be worried that he'll get wolves or manage to steal a dog from another owner. Uncle Gary isn't a dog care after all. Sometimes I miss my old self when I had more options. Until I realized that I've recently become a stripper. Sure I do miss spending time with my family before I became a girl, but I realized that I had more choices since my only family that I lived with now was Uncle Gary. No more Manny for me. Let's talk about the second gift I can't get either, the leather recliner. If I had one, I wouldn't have to go up to my room after watching TV late at night. I'd sleep in it. I've heard that it also has features for the chair such as a neck massager, adjustable firmness, vibrating chair, etc. The only thing I would like to see in it added is a toilet feature. That would be nice. Maybe next year, they'll have a model like that already made for sale. Anyway, I told Uncle Gary that I wanted a cell phone because kids at my school have them and I wanted to be popular. Besides, my offer to Uncle Gary would be more expensive than if he had to pay the country club debt that was already split into more than reasonable price. Uncle Gary accepted the offer and I was happy. After that, I went to work as a stripper and nothing interesting happened for a few days other than chores after work. It's rough. And yes, I was reluctant to ask Uncle Gary regarding a recliner due to already stating that he's poor. Speaking of him, after I made some money after discussing on what I should get for my birthday, I worked for hours and managed to give Uncle Gary the $69 he needed to pay towards mum to avoid suspicion from her. Okay, if he had to work hours just for $69, as what he does, like, is it even worth it at that point? I'm just saying. Uncle Gary did that and I continued to work through the usual stripper club and chores inside the RV. On Thursday, Uncle Gary had complained that his hair is getting a bit rough, and I suggested to him that he should go to the Bombshell Beauty Salon with me. Uncle Gary looked weirdly at me, but decided to give it a try. I've explained to Uncle Gary that Mom sent me here before and found it to be interesting. Annette, my hairstylist, had told Uncle Gary about the incident in the country club, and it turned out to be more ridiculous than what happened actually at the time. From what I've heard... Okay, I'm not... I I, I don't think I could read that, but... Yeah, uh, Greta, I don't think you could do that to other girls, let's just say that. I wonder how it got misinterpreted when Annette got the story because she ended up sounding like a conspiracy theorist when she doesn't think about what the correct version of the story is. Back to the topic, Uncle Gary said that he liked the salon, but hated the wait times. He said he'll only come again in the evenings. I'm glad that Uncle Gary liked it. On Friday, the strip club was shut down thanks to seeing the police cars surrounding that place. It was better if I quit through it while I'm still ahead. Anyway, it made me feel like my dignity had declined since then. I had a feeling that I'd brought too much attention to the people towards the strip club, and I recently realized that, hey, at least I had a ton of money. Uncle Gary couldn't provide me cake, but at least I have a present from him. It was small and heavy, which I found to be a good sign. But when I opened it, I was shocked to see what kind of gift it was. It wasn't an ordinary cell phone. It's called a ladybug. This phone doesn't have a keypad on it or anything, just two buttons, one for calling home and another for emergency. Uncle Gary said that he could only afford it for $100. Damn, at least Uncle Gary ended up paying 31 more for his ugly cell phone. I'll admit that I do have the remaining amount of money in order to buy the cake, but I decided to save up more for Twisted Wizard or other games whenever I feel desperate enough to spend on something important for myself. I wanted to have a stronger sense of financial control unlike Uncle Gary. Yes, I told Uncle Gary about what happened at the strip club, and Uncle Gary felt sad as a result. Uncle Gary then came up to me about how he felt bad that he didn't have enough money to buy a cake, and suggested that we should steal cupcakes from the store. 
I'm willing to go for it if it means I don't have to spend money, and so we're off to the store. When we got there, Uncle Gary had his backpack on for storage. We saw the display of free samples for cupcakes, and Uncle Gary managed to fit a dozen of cupcakes while I only ate one. While we managed to escape from the store in Boston, we enjoyed our treats for the night. I can't believe we could not afford to pay one pack for three dollars. That is really dumb. Sunday. Uncle Gary and I were eating leftover cupcakes that we stole yesterday for breakfast when all of a sudden there there was something in a newspaper that caught my attention. I got it from Uncle Gary when he went to Hasgrable Farms to steal their newspaper on their front porch. I then saw an ad that caught my attention. We're having a bikini contest. I couldn't believe what I just read. There was a bikini contest at the beach and I asked Uncle Gary if I could join the contest. Uncle Gary immediately approved because he told me I might be able to win $5,000. Also, there's an incentive for me to make new friends with girls this time. I'm excited to enter. Okay, hold on. Surely that's not legal now that I think about it. Like, bro, isn't Greg, like, or Greta, like, 13 or, like, 12? Bro, Gary needs to be locked up. Whoever made this contest needs to be locked up. I don't even know what to say. Moving on. I've read it again and again, and this time I've noticed that Bryce Anderson is in the ad with the girl that Roderick was with from a souvenir. Also, I'm aware that I'll get in a lot of trouble if I reveal my past to the contest, which will guarantee a disqualification and an arrest. Besides the warnings of an arrest, something was definitely off in the ad. Why does Bryce Anderson want to do a meet and greet? Granted, he's popular at Westmore Middle School, but popular in plain view? I don't know. I would have heard it at least from one of the women in the bombshell beauty salon. I've only seen him once at the club. I'm all for eating something delicious while watching a contest happening, but they only serve yogurt in this particular bikini contest. I'm not sure why. Maybe it has something to do with attracting Albert Sandy in the contest. Speaking of him, I've heard he got caught once by Vice Principal Roy in the restroom for watching yogurt uh, videos in the library, according to Fragley. Speaking of Fragley, I also did see him at the club as well. He was a weird kid after all. Also, another thing that came up in the ad is the woman. I'm wondering if the woman herself is just this model at the beach. The phone rang, then Uncle Gary picked it up. It was Roderick calling us for something. After that call, Uncle Gary told me that Roderick's going to have a concert at the beach at the 4th of July. Great. This could get difficult with Roderick being at the place where the bikini contest is held. I'm worried about my safety, to be honest. Uncle Gary then drove me to the beach where I had to register for the bikini contest. He was able to help me make sure that it went as smoothly as it can since there are personal information that I don't actually have regarding my previous identity. Speaking about my identity, I did tell Uncle Gary about my new full name before as Greta Williams, and while he did disagree with the choice of a last name, he's okay with it. It's now processing. All of a sudden, the receptionist told us told us that the application was running into some problems. Uncle Gary and I were prepared for it. The lady asked questions regarding the answers on the paper. Uncle Gary told her that the answers of the paper were correct. The problem of address was processing it is that I was from Rhode Island. The lady accepted the answer and the process ended up approving. Uncle Gary and I headed back to the RV. It was clear that I was going to be a contestant in the bikini. If Rally shows up, I'm probably at least going to get be happy. Wait, no, come on, focus. Uncle Gary said that today we'll be heading to the pool because he said that I needed new friends to spend time with. Normally, I wouldn't be excited to go to the town pool after what I've experienced in the country club. I've gotten traumatized from going into the men's locker room for the first time due to how unsanitary it was to see naked guys taking a shower before going into a pool. I'm not sure how the women's locker room, how, how, the, how the women's locker is going to go, but I'm betting that it's similarly disgusting place, except, well, I could tolerate naked girls with a lot more intrigue than usual. Whenever I think of girls now, I still felt like I have business with them only. I get more benefits from them besides friendship. Look, I'm quite desperate to be popular at school, so please understand that I want friends that can help me with my goals. But Greta, don't you already have friends, I hear you ask? Yes, yes I do, but they have their own issues. I've already talked about Rally, and you don't want to hear me gush about it, right? Let's move on to Fragley. I've mentioned he's a weird kid before, and the reason why is that Fragley lives halfway between my house and Rally's house. Fragley is always hanging out in the front yard. And as a result, he's not that popular in school because he's ranked lowest in school popularity, probably out of sheer eccentricity that the kids see at school. And then there's Chirag. I'm glad he's still my friend after the invisible Chirag joke incident, but the issue with him isn't him being small so much as having values from India. 
I'm not bashing his country here, it's just his values don't line up with our school's values, thus causing school popularity to be ranked at 143. No offense here, doesn't help me rise about it. above it. My parents believe in Valentine's Day, don't believe in Valentine's Day when they live in India, Greg. Okay. There are two more friends who are also guys, but each of them have their own issues and their popular ranking is so-so. I'd say they'd be in the 70s, or at worst they'd be in the 120s. Those were Christopher Brownfield and Tyson Sanders. Whenever Rowley's not around in the summer, Christopher's an excellent mosquito magnet. However, he's more of a friend that I could hang out with in summer than at school. Tyson and I like the same ur video games, but he pulls his pants down using the urinal. Those are the reasons why they're in the so-so rank. I need to be popular in school so I don't get bullied over my past. There is a girl who I'd like to be the friend of before getting any benefits from her. I wish things could go better before I was in Spag Union, though. I screwed up a roll around and I'm particularly reluctant to try again. But I've got no choice. Holly Hills. Yep, my old crush is possibly the only way to get in a girl's social group. She's pretty popular, alright. How popular, you ask? She's actually, the four She's actually the fourth prettiest girl in Westmore Middle School. Like the top three prettiest girls already gave their boy have their boyfriends. Holy single, and I'm planning to become her girlfriend. I mean, one of her bestest friends. So it'll help me become quite popular at school and cover up the past. Looks I'll have an, looks like I'll have another chance this time and not mess it up. I'm at the pool now, and when I went into the locker room, I couldn't believe who I saw. It was Heather Hills as a lifeguard. I, I'm starting to rethink my whole summer because ever since that escape from Spag Union to me turning into a girl to having a lame birthday. I'll be glad that I'm friends with her due to Heather being in high school after all. Yes, it's a different league compared to middle school, and I'll do anything for Heather. If the rest of the vacation goes well with her compared to the beginning of the summer vacation, this will be the best vacation ever. Not only will I get a new best friend, but I'd show Riley, Roderick, and Uncle Gary to see how powerless they are on getting the girls. Better watch out. Because if I get that girl, not only it'll affect my popularity at school, but also to my family. It would have definitely be benef it would definitely be beneficial towards my so so reputation. I'd even be the head of the family if Gammy would allow that. Roderick would realize that he's pathetic because I score with an older girl while Uncle Gary would try to get in contact with Jennifer again. He deserves a second chance. Sorry, Rally, I didn't mean to leave you behind but if I ever go on a date with your former baby sister. If I could make him feel better about this revelation, I would take care of his future kids someday and maybe I can make room for him. Enough of that. I, I've probably imagined that if this goes so well during my lifetime, I'll probably even win her over with a big surprise. Yeah, I'm nuts. As for Holly, I'm hoping that if I go out with Heather, at least I can influence Holly and as that would enhance my overall social life. I want Holly to give me respect that I deserve while going out with Heather. As for everyone else that I've mentioned up to that point, I'm going to hope that they don't ruin it. Anyway, now it's my chance to impress Heather Hills and try not to screw it up this time. I slowly approached Heather and gave her some compliments as a greeting. Nice swimsuit, you looked quite pretty in it. Where'd you get it? I got it when I was hired. Who the heck are you? I'm Greta. It was nice to meet you. I hope I can hang out with you at the end of your shift. I like you. You're so cute. Um, thank you, Greta, by the way. Um, I'm Heather, and I hope you enjoy swimming in the pool. No thanks, I'm not interested in hanging out with you, fruitcake. I've got plans. Besides, you're not my type, you sick weirdo. Gotta go now. Bro, how you gonna get called zesty by another girl? That's kind of crazy in my opinion. Anyway, Heather had left the scene after that. I can't believe that she called me a fruitcake after rejecting my offer. She didn't have to be mean to do that. I'm starting to doubt that I'll be her new best friend anytime soon. That sucks. I can understand that girls can be cruel sometimes, even when they can be compete for the sake of popularity. Wonder what the rest of the hills are like. Hot. Gay. Well, dang. I turn around and it looks like Helen had called me gay and Holly had to stop her from doing that. She apologized to me and I forgave Holly considering the fact that my move towards Heather was not that subtle. Holly introduced herself and her younger sister as Helen Piper Hills. I've introduced myself as Greta Williams. Piper definitely started off as rude though. Holly then said, nice to meet you Greta, and she shook my hands. I said to her, peace be with you Holly Elizabeth Hills. Damn it, I messed this one up again. I remember saying that to Holly when I was in church with her. Holly looked baffled for a moment and questioned, Have I met you somewhere before? And you glanced at my body. I answer, You've probably seen me around Plainview, and I'm sure I've been here as long as I remember. Let's just go to the pool. 
I wasn't sure if I managed to throw her off, but she did follow me out of the locker room with, her sus with suspicion in her eyes. I don't want Holly knowing about my past just yet. I decided that to show Holly how I swim in the pool, hoping that I get her mind off my, pa off my past self. I do want to tell Holly the truth someday, because this kind of secret is very difficult to keep from anyone. I believe that I could trust her more than my family, at least. For once, I'm starting to understand why Dad had me sent to a swim team. Not only will this help me get credibility in the bikini contest, but to impress Holly and earn some popularity points. The first thing I done for Holly is to jump in the pool. I showed her how to dive, and I jumped into it and it was a rough landing. I successfully dove for Holly and she couldn't find me for a few minutes because of crowded kids. I don't blame her on that. Once I showed her that I could swim, she seemed impressed that I was able to swim through the pool while Holly couldn't properly float in water without a swim ring. She asked if it was possible to teach her how to swim, since her older sister was supposed to do that thanks to her mom. Usually, I don't really want to teach someone out of my patience, since Holly was asking for it, I accepted her offer and I asked her to pay attention to me as I swim. I wanted her to be my friend after all, for the sake of popularity. After all of that, Holly got the idea on how to swim, but she still had a long way to go. When we were done for the day, I said goodbye to her and she asked if I could come tomorrow again to the pool. I asked Uncle Gary and he said yes, I'd be at the pool tomorrow again, Holly. Monday. Today, Uncle Gary and I arrived at the pool with Holly being at the pool as expected pool as expected. I saw Holly attempted to show herself on diving, but got cold feet at the last second. After Holly had managed to jump finally, I was able to help her swim through the pool around people and not bump into each other. Holly was doing much better than yesterday, but she does swim slowly as she's trying to learn how to swim. Uncle Gary also gave support to Holly as well. Yeah, you could do it Holly, just do it. Speaking of Uncle Gary, he's wearing a suit today because he got an interview for a job. I'm not holding high hopes on him because he got to lots of interviews many times. It seemed clear that the companies he applied for don't want to hire Uncle Gary. Again, I don't think he's the bad guy. Uncle Gary has issues regarding certain expectations when dealing with a workplace. Uncle Gary told Holly and I that he can't stay all day like yesterday due to the aforementioned interview and I told you guys about earlier. Holly and I decided to end early due to the fact that Holly also doesn't like the public pool due to how unsanitary the pool is after swimming in it for so many hours. I agreed with her entirely and we went for lunch. Uncle Gary gave me some cash for all of us to eat at lunch. The snack bar at the pool was a messy place. I usually wouldn't eat there after the first time if it wasn't for the fact that I was with Holly. I'm glad that Holly and I are on the same page regarding the issues at the public pool. I'll have to talk to Rally about letting me back into this country club soon. I wanted to continue teaching Holly Hills on her swimming lessons, but the only pool I could think of when it comes to cleanliness is the country club. After that, I offered Holly a ride home, but she declined over her parents' suspicions and she headed home. I told Uncle Gary to drop me off at my house and he complied, telling me that I had to go somewhere else for today and tomorrow. I could understand why Uncle Gary needed to be somewhere else today, but I didn't understand where he's heading for tomorrow. I asked him about it and he said there's another maintenance for his RV and you need to fix, uh, be alone for it to fix properly. Uncle Gary didn't want me, doesn't want me to be bored around it, which is very understandable coming from him. I was at my house and I went in. I met my parents who seemed to look like they were deeply saddened with something or someone. I told them that I'd be with Roderick and they allowed it. When I went downstairs, Roderick didn't seem too happy to see me. Then Roderick decided to tell me what happened since I left this place. Roderick took a deep breath before saying that my parents wished me a happy birthday when calling to Spag Union. Greg died the next day in Afghanistan. I was not expecting that. The funeral had happened in a quick succession. According to him, only Gammy and a few others knew about this. Uncle Gary wasn't included due to us li living off the grid, and I understood that. Everyone else in the family who weren't invited were either busy or estranged from one another. Rally had not been invited over there at all. I really wanted to go comfort, comfort rally after this. After the service was over, they went to Leisure Towers on Father's Day, where they're still in their funeral clothes. Never thought I'd write this, but I'm glad that I went to the public pool just to have fun with Holly. Mom must have thought it's good to see the three generations of Heffley men to be together for brunch. Honestly, the last time I was there, having a conversation with one another, they compared themselves to others and it reminded me of school, and it just made me more insecure of who I am compared to them. Roderick said that the conversation they had was not only about my death, but also Dad asking Mom whether they could have a dog inside the house. While it's true that I asked him about having a dog before, 
My death seems to convince him that since I've died, Dad would like to honor Greg by getting a dog for the family as a way to deal with the loss. Mom's concerned about Manny getting mauled over by a bad dog, but Dad's not taking no for an answer. After the funeral that they went through, but then, Grandpa had a confession. Grandpa had something to say about Dad's dog, Nutty. Nutty didn't pass away at the butterfly farm of old age. He accidentally ran over Nutty when bar backing his car out of the driveway. The reason why he lied because of my, is because of my dad's anger problems at the time, which scared him. Grandpa hoped that dad would have mourned another loss with him, but dad was really mad about this revelation. Dad told the family to get in the car and left grandpa with the bill on the brunch that they were having. No one talked on the way home while dad was mumbling a lot more than usual. An hour later, dad had came home with a big box. Roderick guessed that it's a dog since they had went to my funeral. Turns out, Roderick was right. When I came home earlier, it was thought that my parents had a neighbor's dog. It wasn't the case, and I'd no wonder I'd no wonder I'd heard barking when I came home. Mom wasn't too thrilled about Dad getting a dog without more discussion, but Dad seemed really happy about it since they went to my funeral. Mom allowed the dog, providing that the dog could be a good part of the family, hoping that the morning will end a lot sooner than expected. Mom said they shouldn't give give the name a, do a dog a name. If I was alive, I would have named him Shredder or like Ripjaw. Roderick liked the idea of, idea of naming the dog after Manny's idea, where after an animal, like Zeb for short, after the name was shortened for Zebra or what Roderick named as Turd for short, as the name was shortened for either Turtle or Ploopy. Mom named him Sweetie, even though the dog is a boy, which was a terrible name in my opinion. People would legitimately assume that the dog is a girl with that name al alone, and they would have to end up correcting people for the rest of their life doing that. Besides, I don't think Uncle Joe would approve of our dog's name. Yes, I said Uncle Joe, not Uncle Gary. Speaking of him, I haven't heard any recent stories of him regarding his past. Let's just hope he's alright. The first thing I saw while going to the living room before going outside to see Rally was seeing Sweetie chase Manny around, which felt kind of entertaining, to say the least. The first impression that I got from Sweetie is that he's barking a lot. I can hope that he'll stay quiet for the rest of the night while everyone's asleep. I went out to Rally's house, and when I knocked the door, Rally opened it. Rally must have looked quite sad on me. I told him that Mom sent me here to comfort him about the loss of Greg Hefley. Rally then let me inside. Rally then talked about the good times and the bad times he had with Greg Hefley. The best times were spending time on Halloween going trick-or-treating with our costumes being shown around the neighborhood. The worst times were about the worm incident, which I wished he would forget about. Rally also mentioned that the time, last time they were together at school. It was the last time where Rowley and quote-unquote Greg have interacted with each other and he missed him. Overall, he felt that Greg had stood out as a best friend compared to other kids at school. I really do feel bad about Rowley losing Greg. I didn't know he felt that he loved me as more than a basic friend who cared about each other. I cared about Rowley and I wished I could come, back, come out to him so that his wounded heart could heal. I decided to ask Rowley if there's video games we could play as that would get rid of our sadness out of our minds, as I'm feeling really sad now. Rally cleared up for a moment before saying yes to my idea, and he suggested playing Formula 1 racing games. I accepted this game, as this is the one game we spent a lot of time playing together. When we played the games together, it's clear that it felt like the old days when we were having a lot of fun. I'm glad that I can make Rally feel better about himself regarding the loss of Greg Hefley. After a while, we were done playing games, and he said it's time to eat dinner. I decided to try and tell Rally the truth regarding his dad's odor issues via jokes that I have planned for. You know, Rally, I like your dad for a reason. Do you know want, want to know why? He fits just like one of us. Your dad smells like a woman. Mr. Jefferson was about to kick me out once again, just like last time when Mrs. Jefferson had told me about the perfume that Mr. Jefferson wears. That was not what I expected from all this. Mrs. Jefferson admitted that her husband had to wear a perfume at work due to serious odor issues in his workplace. I decide to leave, and yes, I still remember about the contest. Tuesday. The reason why I mentioned the bikini contest is because I have more to the show than just swimming. I was hoping that taking care of Sweetie would help me win over people's hearts in the bikini contest. Problem was, it started on the bed, and no, he didn't poop on it. He just slept in the middle of the bed. I had to sleep on the sides to avoid any aggression from him. The truth is, I don't want to get injured by Sweetie at night. I would risk getting bitten. At 7 a.m., Dad had to come into the room to take Sweetie out for a walk. I had to make some calls. Well, I got up before Sweetie did, and I did apologize to Dad about it. He told him that Roderick wanted me to take care of Sweetie, but that Dad said he got it, and I hurried myself down to call Rally and Holly. I'm feeling good.
When I tried to call Rowley this morning, it was clear that I had a limited time talking to him out of fear that Rowley's parents might pressure him to answer their questions. I managed to ask one key question regarding the country club invitation. Thankfully, it only took a half minute to answer. Hey Rowley, one question, am I allowed to go to the club yet? Uh, yeah, I, I talked to my dad about it, and since you guys have paid all of the bill, he's allowing it. Then I hung up on Rowley. Next, I tried to call Holly to see if he managed to pick up the phone, but unfortunately, Holly did not pick up the phone. It was instead Heather who did, and she did not seem to be amused of being called in the morning. As I did, I had all attempt to flirt with her just so I could talk to Holly. Hey, who the heck are you calling this early in the morning? Hey, Heather, this is Greta. I'm here to talk Holly out regarding our deal yesterday. If you don't let me talk to her, let me just say that you have a beautiful voice, Heather. I love the way you sounded on the phone, my uh, my dear. Okay, I'm feeling I'm feeling uncomfortable reading this. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just gonna move on. Yeah, she angrily hung up the phone. I may have attempted to flirt with her for a little respect between the both of us, but I was not teasing her at all. I can't believe that she became paranoid after meeting with her for the first time. Look, I'll find another way to get Holly to the country club with me. After that call, I immediately headed out to Rowley's house and I had to find a way for them to be delayed leaving the house for a bit just so I could contact Holly again. When I got there, I explained to Rowley about the situation. Rowley ended up looking surprised that I managed to talk to Heather after all, but did realize that he'll give it another call for me in that matter. After he managed to reach Heather Hills, he told me to apologize to her for what happened earlier that morning. I didn't understand where Rowley was coming from, but if I wanted to talk to Holly, then I'd made sure that it's worth, worth it for the sake of having Holly. It went better than I expected. Heather, look, I wanted to say that I'm sorry for what I've done earlier. Wait, you too? Oh, really? Boys calling you? Oh, wow. I see. Anyway, I wanted to talk to Holly about where we're supposed to meet. Yeah, it's at Rowley's house. Hey, Holly, about the pool? I've got an idea. Heather did apologize about her behavior earlier, citing harassing phone calls that she got when she was in middle school, thus making sure Holly didn't receive that. I'm glad that Holly accepted the idea of going to the country club with us. I can only hope that Rowley's parents allowed just one more guest for the country club. Thankfully, Rowley's parents allowed Holly to be in the country club, but now we have to pay our own if we ordered something from the country club. I found it inconvenient when Rowley didn't have to pay for anything while Holly and I had to. It's clear that Rowley's dad had forgiven him too easily, as Rowley might need to face some harder prospects that he'll deal with someday. When we were in the country club, Holly and I went to the restroom together, where I ended up when I, where I decided to practice my skills for the bikini contest that was coming up soon. I practiced it in the restroom while Holly do, was doing her business, and I listened to her conversation regarding from her sister to her life. What surprised me most was from her conversation was the fact that she's the unfavorite in the Hills family. Before Holly started talking about that topic, Rowley called us to see if we're finished in the restroom. Greta? Holly? Hello? Are you two still in there? Rowley was calling us, so we decided to wrap up our conversation in the restroom. Holly had changed into a different kind of swimsuit, while I still wore the same. I found her new swimsuit to be, uh, really hot. Anyway, I'm going to continue to teach her how to swim like usual. Happy that I have both friends who I find to be so attractive. What the hell? After two more hours of teaching Holly how to swim, it was clear that she improved her swimming skills very quickly. I'm quite proud of her. I know that Rowley wanted me to spend time with him, and I was about to ask him because he seems to have questions for me. Hey, Greta, I got some questions in my mind that I wanted to ask you personally. Me too, I also got some questions that I'd like to ask you ever since we met at the pool. Both of them seem to have questions for me. I don't know what it was, but I hope it's not too personal. Holly well, decided to ask first on whether I'm wearing contact lenses. I do wear contact lenses because if I don't have it, I'd wear that gl those glass that are three inches thick and looked ridiculous. Raleigh then asked another question. Have I, have I ever heard about a doggy dropped it? Yes, I've done it before with him. Holly also heard it and asked one last question. Do I know Fragley? Yes, I know him. They look chalk, and I've realized that they're on to me. Raleigh then asked one final question. Are you actually Greg Hefley? Well, I answered it truthfully and explained the whole thing that happened from Spaggy Union until today. I left out Uncle Gary as cause, because of the transformation since he gave me the vacation that I wanted. I told him that I had transformed myself in Spag Union instead of to make sure that the military is going after me instead of Uncle Gary. Riley looked really happy and hugged me for one moment before letting me go and saying about our relationship as a whole. I'm not gay, Greg. Zooey mama. Riley, you liar. I saw something hard in your- Okay, yeah, um, moving on. Then I gave Rowley the biggest nuggie of his life, causing him to scream that he's getting harder and hot. Huh? 
Yeah, moving on. I, Rally, you freaky as hell. I'm not going to lie. I giggled at that until Holly... Okay, he giggling, bro. Greg also a freak. I'm not going to lie. I giggled at that until Holly ordered me to stop and that I should probably slow down the relationship to avoid drama. Rally... Okay, getting bricked in public is wild work. I'm sorry. That is... Bro, you, you should be put on a list. Just close the schools right now. I don't even know what to say. Anyway. Rally's my best friend, and Rally assured me that he really does like me, but he can't date me right now out of his parents' presence. Wait, okay, I'm sorry, but that is kind of a bit gay. I'm not gonna lie. Bro, that, he, that is a dude in a woman's body. Or, I don't know if I didn't mean to be, if that sounded offensive, but, bro, that that's low-key, like, he, he, he I, I know he's Greta now, but... That, that's kind that's kind of zesty i'm not gonna lie i don't know how i feel about that i'm an ally but come on now that's 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 come on now now that rally mentioned it i do think that it's an issue with his parents because if they found out about it i don't think they'd let me hang out with him outside of school ever again and that's a big problem i asked rally and holly to keep it a secret from anybody else due to concerns of getting bullied at school rally agreed while holly wanted more from me all right what more do you want from me holly Greta, I want you to join the contest that's going to be held on the 4th of July. Please beat Heather and Piper for me. I want them to lose. I already signed up for it earlier. You can talk to my Uncle Gary about it if you need, if you so please, Holly. I need some cash to make my lifestyle workable. You promise to keep it a secret if I win, Holly? What? Really? I'm impressed. Just beat Heather and Piper out of their own game and I won't say any of your secrets. I guess I haven't really told you guys yet about my family and my status. I'll win for Holly if it means having her as a best friend. I'd be lucky if I could get benefits from her. Yeah, Greg, you a freak. I'm sorry, bro. This this guy, Greg, like, I don't even know what to say, bro. This is all he thinks about with a guy and a girl. Like, I, I, that's no comment. I'm an ally, but come on, Greg. Like, calm down. Holly then started herself off with a story about how she came to be. From what I could gather, Piper herself had received the most favorable treatment, while Heather had- Wait, 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 isn't Piper the younger sister? Why is she entering this contest? Bro, clo this, this whole fam- this whole- everybody in this story is messed up. Anyway. From what I could gather, Piper herself had received the most favorable treatment, while Heather had enough cash to keep her status quo. Poor Holly having to deal with that. Holly then specifically addressed Heather, as she's one of the top cheerleading girls in Crossland High School. Heather has gotten so popular that she got rewarded by her parents for her for performance, while Holly didn't get anything for her hard work when she used to do after school activities as well. Holly used to be an actor on stage, but stopped at a certain point. Holly said that her mom was becoming a bit too controlling regarding her stage acting. Specifically, her teachers told her to back off and she didn't listen. As a result, Holly stopped acting on stage. This reminds me of a time when my dad had to encourage me to play soccer and it didn't work out. Holly then talked about Piper, where she got a lot of special treatment to the point that Holly admitted that Piper had entered the contest when she was three. What? She's a victim. I don't, and moving on, this whole the Hills family should be in prison, though. I just want to make that clear. No wonder Holly wanted me to beat Piper in that contest alone. It's clear that his family may have similarities to my family, but the difference was that Holly had suffered while I didn't. Roderick's usually the one to suffer from my family being an unfortunate unfavorite to them be besides me due to his choice of music genre by dad. On one hand, Roderick managed to attract quote-unquote rotten teenagers towards the driveway, thus attracting some of his new fans. On the other hand, the loaded diaper band had trouble securing locations to play at due to the fact that the heavy metal genre is quite niche for music. Now that I think about it, if my parents had found out what actually happened to me, then I'll be shunned to become the unfavorite to the family instead. In fact, I might suffer more than the, what Holly suffers. Roderick still has mom supporting him, but I have no one in the family but him. Holly then told me that Piper is a favorite in the family so much that she appeared in a magazine. Holly said that she didn't have it now, but will have it if I could be around at Rowley's house. I'd be happy to see it if I could get my hands on it. I don't like the way Greg said that, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I think Greg should be in jail too, bro. This I don't like the way that sounded. That is like a six-year-old Greg. Moving on. Now it was time for us to leave the country club. All of us were happy together at the end and my secret still safe. Uncle Gary wasn't at the country club like he promised, so I decided that I actually had to stay at my house where I used to live at. When I got there, I explained to mom and dad that Uncle Gary was supposed to pick me up at the country club pool, but for whatever reason, he wasn't there. I asked him if I could use the phone to call him and they obliged, and so I made the call. After the call, Uncle Gary said that he'll have to pick me up in the morning due to dealing with an unexpected breakdown of his RV. 
That made perfect. That makes a perfect plan to call Holly up before tomorrow, overseeing Piper in the magazine. I hope she looked nice on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, Greg. Greg, why are you why are you hoping like a six year old looks nice? Yeah. No, Greg. You you going to prison? I hate to break it to you. Anyway, I called her and she agreed to get to Rowley's house in the earliest hour, earliest hours before anyone would know. So I decided to eat. While making dinner, I encountered something on the paper that made me look excited. There was a ad where Lil Cutie was usually at. It was clear that the final one is going to be printed in August thanks to Bob Post, the original creator, retiring. Want to be on the funny pages? We're looking for a talented cartoonist to write and draw a one-panel comic to replace Lil Cutie. Can you tickle our funny bone? Man, I've been waiting forever for an opportunity like this. I've done this at school that was shown once, but it got changed. This is an opportunity where I can show these skills not only for the newspaper, but also to the contest that I'm entering. It's clear that this is where my drawings and comedy can really shine for the show. I decided to reuse an old idea of mine where I made the character called Crichton the Cretan, and I'm on the roll, hoping this comic strip will be on the newspaper. Okay, I'll admit, I took the idea from Bill Tritt when he made a comic called Dumb Teachers. Blarp, hey Heather, are you ready to go on a date with me? No way, Creighton, you just pooped your pants. Nuh-uh. Yaha. Uh Uh-oh, looks like I forgot to put on a diaper in my pants. Greg, I'm not gonna lie, that, you gotta step it up, that was not it, bruh. You, you, that's not getting put in the paper, you gotta come up with something better than that. Anyway, I took the idea from Bill Crit when he made a comic called Dumb Teachers. It's because I'm running out of jokes with Creighton at this point, you're not seeing as much idiocy from people anymore. I also shipped them with Heather Hills, who just told me to back off from calling her in the early morning. I also did this for Holly, as I'm humiliating Heather here. This will teach Heather a lesson for messing with the both of us. Since Piper had called me gay in the locker room, I decided that I'd retaliate to her as well by drawing her in a comic where she acted gay around her boss. That'll teach her not to mess with me next time. Dinner is served. Hey Piper, have you been kissing my wife? This isn't her lipstick, I just had incredibly red lips. You're fired. Greg, I'm sorry, bro. You're going to have to step it up. He, he, he's just dissing everybody. There's no punchline. I, I could come up with something better than this, honestly. But anyway, I guess not everybody's as talented. I also drew Manny as the mean boss in this comic because I want to let people in Plainview New know that Manny is a total snitch, a spoiled brat, and a bossy kind of kid. I'd hope that this comic would ruin his reputation as a good kid in the family, in the Hathley family. I'm glad I could turn my experience with Manny from misery to comedy. I would have continued to draw a bunch of comics last night, but Sweetie was driving me crazy, and so I couldn't concentrate at all. He sat on my pillow, licking his paws, his tails, and he was really getting into it. I wonder what's up with my dog. Yeah, this freakiness runs in the family, I think. Speaking of dogs, the ad said it's not accepting animal comics due to a comic about Precious Pucci. It ran for over 50 years, and the author who wrote it died a long time ago. The newspaper had kept recycling his old comics, but I heard it changed recently and it's not good. The newspaper had tried to get rid of it many times, but every time they've attempted to cancel Precious Poochie, fans come come to the publishing plant and make a big deal out of it. Those people stopped the presses until they agreed to reinstate the comic back in the paper, so I'm guessing Precious Poochie is their pet to them. I don't know anyone who would find it funny in my age, with the original lines on Precious Poochie and the publishing plant must have done the same thing, thought the same thing. They changed the dialogue, hoping that the younger generations would either support Precious Poochie in the newspaper, or they could finally get rid of it due to the justified backlash, and the latter did. All I know is that to me, you look like you're lots of fun. I Like, I'm not singing, I hate to say it, but honestly, it's kind of better than anything Greg's written so far. Y'all could read it if you want. Just not the way they wanted. Instead of the Precious Poochie comic finally getting cancelled, Four busloads of senior citizens from Leisure Towers showed up at the publishing plant downtown, and they didn't leave until they had they till they had to make sure the dialogue reverts to the original, a firing of an editor, and an apology. The comic itself ended up being funnier than the original. If the comic had ended up being cancelled, I would have liked to write jokes regarding Sweetie because he's a funny dog. But it's getting late. Time to go to bed for another day. Wednesday. I decided to hurry to mail my comic strip by sealing an envelope and a stamp from Mom's room before going to Rowley's house. I need to be prepared since Uncle Gary could come to pick me up at any time and I couldn't afford to delay for any reason. I'm worried if I stay in my former home too long, they'll figure it out and I'll be treated really badly once they figure it out. After I mailed my comics, I hurried to Rowley's house and I saw Holly there at the front yard as well. 
I went up to Holly and asked if she had a magazine that Piper had appeared in. Holly confirmed it and showed me the magazine where Piper had appeared in. Let's just say I'm glad they wasn't on some tablet where they say things you might not like. From what I've seen on the magazine, I can't believe Piper herself looks so cute. Yeah, Greg, you're going to prison, bro. This guy's Carl Malone, Josh Giddy, EDP, all put into one. I, I don't, I like, I can't keep defending this guy. You know what? You know we should just cancel Greg because this enough is enough. No wonder Holly's jealous about that. Then I saw an RV pull up towards Rowley's house. It was Uncle Gary. Rowley then came out of the house and Holly explained that I wanted to see the magazine. I bid my goodbye to both and I told Rowley that I like you too. Rowley smiled when I said that to him because when I'm on the when I'm in the RV, Rowley happily waved goodbye at me while Holly only gave me a small wave. I hope that Holly actually doesn't have feelings for me because I'd be concerned if she had feelings before I transformed myself into a girl. Yeah, that'd be the fumble of the century, Greg, I'm not gonna lie. Uncle Gary was driving his RV back to the forest near Hazardable Farms when he asked about my day yesterday. I told him about how my old friends had figured out my identity and how they seemed to be accepting towards me. Uncle Gary then asked if I had, my face, if I had faced any rejection among friends. I told him that Rowley was lying about not being gay, but he seems to have an interest in liking the new me. See, that's what I was saying, like, low-key on the DL, that's kind of zesty, I'm not gonna lie. Uncle Gary thinks Rowley's in denial of wanting to go out on a date with me. Yeah, I agree with him, considering the fact that Rowley's my best friend. I also became friends with Holly. I don't know her thoughts about me being transformed into a girl, but if she doesn't want to be around me anymore, I could sadly understand that. I don't want to actually intimidate Holly with my attitude. Uncle Gary suggested if we could have fast food for dinner. I'd like that, and he agreed to go buy me some food. However, I won't be doing through a drive through as the RV is taller than the suggested height according to the sign above the menu. I guess it's just for safety reasons, but I'm glad they didn't call them idiots and like my dad. Dad tried to place an order through the near a trash can at the fried chicken place. Guess who's the idiot here? Not Uncle Gary. After eating, Uncle Gary had managed to drive back to the forest near Hasgribble Farms and said that he'll go to the restroom at the shed. When he got out, I decided to pray to God just like my grandma does when she needed help from him. It's clear that God favors her like she has a direct pipeline to God or something. Dear God, let me find my doctor's notes so I don't actually have to get vaccinated. For whatever reason, I couldn't really convince God to help me through, but it doesn't mean I'm going to quit trying to pray. Dear Lord, please don't let my family reject me because of who I am, and please let me win the bikini contest so I could woo Rally and Holly, and please let me go on a date with the two so I could have Rally as my boyfriend and Holly as my girlfriend, and please let me marry both of them at St. Martha's Parish Church someday so I could be in a polyamorous marriage and this marriage make this marriage legal. Amen, and thank you in advance. Greg, Greg, I hate to break to you, but God is not going to mess with that, bro. He is not accepting that prayer. You cannot be double dipping like that. Anywho. Well, I've prayed for the night, hoping that God will give me some answers as soon as possible. I was asking a lot, but I want the future of the relationship between me, Rally, and Holly to at least be stable, because I like them a lot. July. Monday. Oh God, I haven't written in this thing for over a week. That's because nothing major has happened. It's just like a usual boring week. No, I'm not cooped up in Uncle Gary's RV for a whole week. Just a little bit of the same until today, where I'm ready for the contest. I tried developing new talents to show up for the contest. I tried to bond with Sweetie, but it ended up failing. Unfortunately, up to that point, I was actually having the summer that I re literally wanted compared to Mom and Dad setting up it up for me, until Sweetie came along. He ended up ruining two things that I like to spend my time in my former home, television and sleep. Sweetie does things that my dad usually won't tolerate, but it seems that he's given preferential treatment from him, but Sweetie doesn't feel the same. Honestly, I'm glad that Sweetie doesn't act up like Manny, since Sweetie doesn't get me in trouble, which I've already faced right now regarding my new transformation into another gender. I have no idea what Sweetie likes and what he doesn't other than my dad. I don't think I could show the judges of the bikini contest as a dog hair, since my experience with him is limited at best. Speaking of Manny, I've avoided him while I can out of, while I can out of concerns that he'd figure out and tell my whole family about it. Roderick was also avoiding Manny for similar reasons, expect that he has an excuse to do so, practicing his drumming skills with the band in the basement. Lately, I've talked to Roderick about my plans to enter the contest and I showed him the flyer that I got. Greta, when I have a sign up for performing at the boardwalk near the beach, I've never heard that they're also having a contest. Something's up. And who's that nerd Bryce Anderson? I explained to Roderick who Bryce Anderson is. Roderick responded that something's up if he's only popular at school and not so much in plain view, due to Roderick and loaded diapers popularity that could be recognized locally. Roderick thinks that it's a setup by a loser whose sole, per pop sole popularity is only from one school. 
Roderick then warned about her relationship getting suspicious from mom and dad. Roderick's not wrong here. It's clear that I couldn't show affection towards Roderick because he's obviously my older brother that mom and dad still don't know about my identity. Riley, however, I could be really be affectionate towards him and he's my kind of guy that I could go out with, e with ease. During the times that I visited Riley, we had to do it behind our parents' backs out of- wait, what? Uh, out of okay, out of fear that we're that they're gonna disapprove of our relationship. Once it succeeded, we were able to go on a date from the early morning until the early afternoon. It was a nice change of pace, considering the fact that it's all a secret from that point on. How could I not like Rowley? He was my best friend since he moved into Plainview a few years ago. However, it doesn't mean that it will catch ourselves off guard though. Rowley slowly realized that the secret is gonna get us into a lot of trouble if found out about it because i've warned about my consequences and that as long as no one found out about it it was all clear thank goodness i have friends speaking of friends holly's been introducing me to stuff that girls have interest in nowadays holly does come in handy when i need something from her you know greta putting on lipstick makes you pretty i'd love to see how you look when you put it on i'm kind of excited to see you put it on okay bro these are some freaky ass 12 year olds i'd like to say that i don't know how the old they're this is like what is this, dog days? They're like 12, 13. Bro, this, this is OD as hell. I don't even know what to say. Wow, thanks, Holly. I'll be sure to use it when I'm at the contest. This will look great on me. I'm going to win that contest for sure. Holly's face had become even redder when I said that. Holly then told me that I hope you're going to look even better wearing that lipstick to win the whole contest, Greta. See you later. And she left with a smile on her face. I don't know if I'm missing something from her because of my new transformation, but I'll be prepared to win that contest for sure. You know what? I kind of respect Greg. Like, even even though he's a woman, he's still getting hoes. I can respect that. You know? Never stop. After I met with some friends, I went back to Uncle Gary to see if he could help me win the contest. Uncle Gary agreed to help me, providing that it's not something about fashion choices. I'm okay with that because I don't expect him to know about that considering the fact that he's poor. Anyways, we decided to plan out the in the way in the form of an emergency plan. I'm surprised that he came up with a somewhat complicated plan in case the contest went really wrong. It included a plan if someone had revealed who I really was. I'm hoping that Rowley and Holly don't try doing it all doing it to me after all, either intentionally or accidentally. Besides, I've let Uncle Gary know about the two and Rowley would be monitored while I had to come up with a plan dealing with Holly. I have to find a way to make Heather and Piper lose the contest soon. Uncle Gary won't help him with that, sadly. However, he does have leverage against Roderick and Loaded Diaper to an extent. Uncle Gary tried to negotiate Mom about becoming a manager because Roderick and his bandmates were making a late payment towards Rowley's dad. He ended up being the Loaded Diaper's assistant manager instead. Speaking of Mom, my family had gotten suspicious towards me regarding the relationship between Roderick and I, my habits, and spending an inordinate amount of time with Rowley and Holly. Don't ask about the latter, as I have no idea why my family thinks that spending time with Holly is suspicious, but I had an idea on how my relationship with Rowley had caught them with their funny looks. I'll admit it, I really don't want to spend my rest of summer being cooped up in Uncle Gary's RV until school begins just because I have involuntary change, involuntarily change into a new gender. I'm glad that Holly had taught me a lot, and I can't but help but spend time with Rowley in the latest way possible. Rowley had grown to like the new me, and Holly had given me more appreciation. Looks like I've arrived. Yeah, I'm now at the boardwalk near the beach, and the first thing I've noticed is that Rowley's not at the boardwalk. I've mentioned to Uncle Gary about what I noticed. Uncle Gary thinks that it must have been his parents that denied him from going. Honestly, I'm relieved that he isn't here. I don't want him questioning about the choices that I've made registering under an alias. It was a good idea at the time. And just as I expected, Holly was here. For some reason, she brought a flower bouquet that was meant for me. Holly explained to me that she was giving me flowers as a sign of wishing good luck. Rowley was behind me and he was not happy about what he was seeing. Okay, that's a red flag right there. Y'all stay safe out there. With my, with my quick thinking, I explained to him that Holly's just here to wish me luck on the stage and Rowley then calmed down for a bit. I asked him about his new outfit. Rowley explained that he wants to look nice for the show. Okay, Rowley's actually looking hella fresh. Like, I could see him. He got those Rick Owen. I think it was a Rick Owen shoes, the Balenci pants, and a polo the polo shirt there that's fire he got it on since they're both here i told him about how mom dad and manny don't know that i've changed and i wanted them to keep it quiet around them because of the possibility of getting kicked out fortunately rally said that the family's here for roderick's loaded diaper band Raleigh then said that the reason why his parents aren't here is because of their disapproval of him going to a contest like this
So he lied to them that he's going to my house and visit them, see if they can make it to my funeral. It does explain on how he could get away from his parents without getting into trouble. I'm quite impressed on him for being somewhat independent-minded. Raleigh finally told me that he wanted that he went there in his outfit. He thinks that he's lucky that they're gonna that they're also gonna see the contest. Although Mom doesn't approve at all. Mom said to him that they're only here for the loaded diaper ban and her reasons of disapproval ranges from sexism to demeaning women to the gay corn industry connection. Don't ask. Raleigh didn't know either. Holly responded that my mom was way too strict, to the point that she'll try to trivialize an enjoyment of this to everyone. Besides, the issue that Holly had is the amount of stage mums that she's currently seeing, how it reminded her about the problems with her mum. Yeah, I can understand where she's coming from. Then the announcement of the contest was about to begin, starting with Bryce as the host. Hello and welcome to the contest, everyone. I'm your host, Bryce Anderson. And I'm the cameraman for this contest, Jordan Jury. Before we allowed to get out there and waltz on the stage, the judges decided that they had to examine the other girls behind the stage in order to properly decide who's going on first and who's going out last. I'm a little embarrassed about this, but I understand about their policies regarding the contest. I wonder what Mom must have thought about this when she had to find out who I truly am. Prissa seems pretty impressed by me, and I've managed to intimidate Piper enough that she does not look like she'll actually win. Doesn't mean that her mom could try to outdo me. In fact, it's dangerous to compete with stage moms who try to outdo one another due to the fact that they're aggressive to win by pimping their own daughters. Honestly, I'm glad that my mom is the opposite of that. Wait, wait, so is it is it like a beauty pageant or is it like is it like a skills contest or is it just like because I feel like if it isn't, it's just illegal because like if they let like the six year old win and it's like a beauty contest, like bro, those judges are going to prison in my opinion, or they should at least. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Moving on. Speaking of mom, the reason why I'm doing this is because before and after my gender change, I also felt like that money is tight, and a girl gotta do what a girl gotta do. I guess I'll keep this journal about the time that I'm with the gay corn industry, at least according to mom. I think that the reason why mom connected the contest to that is due to how intertwined those two are. That's actually true. This is actually true. Uh, child acting does often lead to stuff like that. So, just warning y'all out there, stay safe. Mom thinks that the, since there was certain movement in her past years that because the popularity of bikini contests to skyrocket overnight. She thinks that the gay corn industry has established since then and promoted those bikini contests to a wider mainstream audience. It's clear that nowadays mom's discussed on how women were turned out from her time until the present. Seriously, she needed a new friend. After the judges were done deciding on who's going up front first, I'm finally relieved that the show is going forward. I'm aware that the loaded diaper band is here to perform, but it happens after the contest is over. I don't know how I could rig this contest to my favor of concern that Holly Hills might win the bikini contest, or Heather Hills might win the bikini contest. Yeah, I promised Holly something like that. Alright, from what Holly had told me before, I had to make sure I could do at least proper makeup, tanning, and routine poses like front, back, and individual. Oh, so it was like a bodybuilding competition. I could lift more than Greg, probably, I'm not gonna lie. I could rep 180 on bench at, like, 170 body weight. Just saying. Sorry, I had to flex on y'all. I'm thankful that Holly had helped me out before I could enter into the competition. I did alright, but I wondered if Heather's going to lose because the stakes here are unusually high. Like, there's many girls in this competition. After all the contestants that had entered the contest were shown, the judges looked, took quite a long time to come up with who's the winner of the show. Eventually, it's revealed to be Patty Farrell. Oh, well, at least Heather had lost the competition in my eyes. I don't know if Holly would see the same way as I have, but I hope that Holly's left satisfied. The victory music that Patty's requested was lame. If I had one, I would have chose a Twisted Wizard Clear theme. Greg, you are as much of a dork. Bro, I choose like Forever by Drake. I feel like that would be a good song. Or like Teach Me How to Dougie or something. Those are classics. Uh, I'm just saying, Greg. That, uh, that's what I would have done. It's short, so I don't have to annoy people with my choice of theme compared to Patty's victory music, Ding Dong, The Witch is Dead. Speaking of music, after Patty talked to Bryce about her victories, the Loaded Diaper Band were ready to play their music. Who's ready to rock? I am. Oh, I am too, man. During the time that Roderick's band were playing one of their songs, I, asked, I talked to Holly about the deal, wondering if that counts as Heather and Piper losing the contest. Thankfully, she understood it as she underestimated the amount of contestants that entered the contest. All of us went around the beach when suddenly, Rally and I encountered something familiar. We couldn't believe that Roderick's keychain picture had come from a, some kind of cardboard cutout instead of a real girl. 
I'm also shocked that she's wearing one piece swimsuit while Bryce's depiction of her is wearing two pieces. I've explained to Holly about the situation regarding Bryce's advert and she said that Bryce must have made the contest for, for a, raise a cause insight or something. Holly then shrugged. Riley thinks that's not the case as he would have heard something from Bryce if there's a cause. Now that I've heard from both of them, I'm starting to wonder if quote unquote save a hippo and trust foundation is actually a bunch of baloney. Then I saw something that caught my attention. It was a cranium shaker that Roderick's talking about. I ran over to pay for the ride, and I was hoping that my friends would be excited to ride it with me, but they seemed to stay back for a bit. I guess they're actually quite scared to go on a ride like this. After I paid for it, the operator had strapped me back and locked me inside the cage. Pause. There is no going back, and I'm starting to have cold feet about this. If the cranium shaker is one of the most, the cranium shaker was one of the most nauseous rides I've ever felt. It flips you upside down over and over and at one point my face was about to hit the pavement six inches away before flipping itself up once again. During the ride the cage was creaking and the bolts were about to come loose. I tried getting everyone's attention but Roderick's band were loud enough to drown it out. When it was over I couldn't feel like talking as it would risk me throwing up and I could barely walk away from that experience. I had to sit down on a bench for a long time and wait for the Disneyest to go away. This isn't even the worst part yet. Rowley and Holly weren't there to help me get rid of the Disneyest. I'm betting that both of them just went on one of those kitty rides and both of them are old. Then, someone came over to me inspecting. It was my dad. My dad then asked uncomfortable questions about me. Before I could even answer his questions, I accidentally threw up on the ground. I made dad furious and he threatened me. Well, let's have a long talk, friend. I immediately ran. Dad then got the belt out, but his pants had dropped. Unfortunately, it kept chasing me as I deserved to be punished for accidentally throwing up near the cranium shaker. It really was an unfortunate accident that I threw up on him and I regretted it. Brian, do you guys think Frank wears baggy jeans and Tim's? Let me know. I tried to run as fast as I could, but Dad's belt was getting much closer to me, and I'm not running for no reason. I'm running to look for Uncle Gary so that he could get me out of here again. I hope that he'll understand me when I admit to him that I accidentally just threw up on Dad's leg. Granted, the cranium shaker was the cause of me vomiting after all. Fortunately, Dad ended up tripping himself over after I successfully escaped from his grip of punishment. Say cheese, Frank. I wasn't expecting to run past Mr. Sella and Seth at all, and I'm just as surprised as you are. Usually this contest is not meant to be funny, as Seth won't get the jokes in that matter. I was looking for Uncle Gary when I saw him talking to that woman and her kid. It looked like they were done and the woman had driven away with her kid. Uncle Gary saw me and asked about the situation. I explained to him about the situation and Uncle Gary understood that it was accidental as the rise usually would make anyone feel sick afterwards and laughed about my dad. What we weren't expecting was mum coming up to us, telling me that I should be home with her and the rest of the family. I gave her a chance to explain why I should be coming home. Mum admitted that she figured out who I actually was based on the fact that I didn't go on a date with Roderick as much as I hung out with Rowley often. Mom also figured that I've called Holly often due to her constantly talking with Holly's mom when she meant to be calling someone else. Oops, mom said that she's alright hanging out with uh, me hanging out with them as often as I like. Mom also said that the home itself isn't the same without me. Finally, mom offered me something I couldn't refuse. Not only would I get a vacation that I wanted, but I'd also be uh, allowed to be with my friends at our house until 10pm. I'll be allowed to get three video games before my first day of school once again. And I told mom that's a deal, as I found out the deal to be sweet, but I do worry if there's strings attached. I didn't want to be too skeptical, as I'm worried it, that the offer is good for the first time and I reject it. I'd possibly miss it, and the second time that it's offered, it would be a lot less than it's worth. It was a better offer than staying in Uncle Gary's RV, as I was bored at that place without any good entertainment to offer. Let me cut to the chase here. Uncle Gary and I talked about it, and he understood as he realized that he didn't have games for me to be entertained. We said our goodbyes to each other with a somber but satisfied look. Holly also said goodbye and she left with her family. Roderick and his band went home in their van, and Dad had to be taken to the ER as his ankles were twisted. Bro, he broke both of his ankles, that's crazy, we have prom Russell Westbrook. Yes, Rowley had to come with us until we're finally home. Wednesday. This morning, I noticed that my dad had given me some silent treatment. I'm worried about my relationship with him because while I admit that it hasn't been great to start with Spag Union, seeing each other right now, I'm wondering about whether if Dad would understand me if, I'm th if I were to explain to him why I'd escaped from Spag Union and how I turned myself into a girl. I talked to Mom about this, but Mom said that Dad will be fine. He just needs time to process all of this. 
Mom claimed that she talked to Dad about it, however, Roderick had a different story regarding my outcome with this situation with Dad. Roderick told me that he was so mad that not only did I escape from Spag Union, but I turned myself into a girl and vomited on him. Roderick thinks that Dad's going to put me up for adoption because he's planning to give up on me. I thought it was nonsense until I saw my dad's planner and I'm feeling scared. At about 10 a.m., dad told me that to get in the car for a surprise trip for me to talk with him. I'm feeling scared because I do believe that he's going to put me up for adoption since I'm quite surprised that he finally talked to me since the time he had twisted his ankle. Dad told me to get in the car and I did just that. For some reason, he's bringing Sweetie along for the ride and I realized that maybe Sweetie's going to go up for adoption and not me. I couldn't be too sure, as I still have this possibility of being put up for adoption out of spite from my dad. On our way from the city, dad had stopped his car for gas and I'd looked for clues to see where he's going. Apparently he's going to grandma's house, for me or for sweetie, I wonder. After he filled up the car, I found out who's getting adopted. Come to grandma, sweetie. I love to have you here. After we dropped sweetie off at his new home with grandma, we were in the back of the car. When we were out of the neighborhood, Dad asked me about the time I was in Spag Union. First, I corrected him my name, and second, I told everything about Spag Union and why I wanted to escape from him. I told him that I lived with Uncle Gary for a while. Of course, I didn't tell him that Uncle Gary changed my gender. I told him I changed my gender from drinking potions in the basement in a form of a lie. Again, Uncle Gary gave me the vacation that I wanted and Dad brought the idea. Dad commented on the gender potion part being military secret, not knowing if there's an antidote at all. If there was, he'd gladly turn me back into a real boy. But I didn't want that. It wasn't easy being a boy, and it certainly wasn't easy being a girl. But I just like who I am now. Anyway, we ride at a baseball stadium. Well, I'm betting it's going to be fun. Dad said that Mom bought the tickets for us, and after the game, he doesn't want to talk to me anymore afterwards. Dad, what the hell is wrong with you? I can't believe that our baseball team lost the game. This sucked. Dad and I left the stadium feeling quite miserable of what was going on. The final score was about 9-8, to eight and it hurts. Yeah, that would be a really boring game. Only 9 home runs, or I guess 17. I don't know baseball, I'm just yapping. We hadn't talked at all in the car when we got home. Mom seemed quite nervous at the look of us. Mom confirmed that she paid for those tickets hoping that we'd bond together. Well, Dad just told me that he didn't want to talk after the game, so that's already an issue before we were able to bond. It's just that during the halftime show, you wouldn't believe that all out of all the people, Christina was performing on the field. The performance didn't go any better. She only sang the start and the end of our national anthem, and the rest was just random. It's like when Fergie sang the national anthem at the NBA game. Do y'all remember that? Thursday. I still can't get over the fact that Dad went back to giving me the silent treatment. Mom and Roderick accepted me of who I am since then, but Dad and Manny weren't as accepting. Manny is a completely separate issue that I'm dealing with regarding gender role expectations. Dad, however, seemed to look very disappointed of who I've become, and that's beyond my control from a potion. Mom had given up a lot to talk to Dad about accept me, accepting me and how he should quote-unquote not give up on me. It seemed that Mom may be partially successful thanks to Dad looking pretty tired in the morning. Well, I hope she did the same thing to Manny, because if Manny isn't punished for being a mean person, there's going to be problems down the line, and by then it would be too late. While I was eating cereal, Dad then started talking to me again. Dad said, look, Greta, I don't hate you. I'm just not interested in dealing with you and your problems anymore. I've expected, I've accepted the responsibility of failing, of failed parenting, and I just wanted to move on. Mom said I have to tolerate you from now on, so okay. Jeez, Dad, you've admitted disinterest in working with me. I did feel like I have to do something to fix our relationship, and that's between me and Dad. Sure, I'll admit that there are things that I've done that Dad doesn't approve of, like a savings from bag union, losing a soccer game, or even eating cereal at 3 a.m. Honestly, I wanted to improve my relationship with him while he's respecting my decisions with good reasons. Currently, I'm just sad about this. While eating some cereal, I noticed something in the newspaper. It's clear that Dad's not going to be happy about this. Contest has been cancelled. Beloved comic will continue. Lil Cutie is one of the worst comics of all time, in my opinion. It's even worse than Precious Poochie. Me and my dad hated it on how it's badly, how badly its humor is. We've read it just to see how bad it is. It's rare for Lil Cutie to be good, if at all, in my opinion. To be fair, some sees little kids, some people see little kids being funny, but it's not that funny. I gave the newspaper to Dad, even though I'm aware that's going to be an even worse mood after he reads the news. 
After I gave my dad the newspaper, it was clear that he, once he finished his cereal, he just left home for work. Normally I wouldn't be concerned about when dad's coming home from work or not, but I'm worried that mom would find out about dad and accuse me of not being able to bond with him. Honestly, I think that mom should worry about dad's dissatisfaction of life here. Bro, Frank's about to leave any day and I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wouldn't blame him. Speaking of mom, she expected me to be friendly towards anyone who comes into my way. I disagree with this statement as it's very unrealistic for me to get along with everyone out of serious concerns if I'm going to get hurt by others or not. Mom's intention is from the books that she read when she was little. I've read them and I can say that friendships are different for everybody and it's unpredictable. To be fair to mom, I do get along with her just fine. I just believe that she had outdated facts when she was growing up. I also got along with Roderick just fine. Just that our relationship has barely changed, even after I turned myself into a girl. The man still calls me Bubby and I've told mom about it. Mom insisted that it's fine, however, I found it really annoying. When Manny called me Bobby, he meant to call me brother, but I'm not his brother anymore. I'm his big sister, and I hope he learns some hard lessons when he grows up. Manny can't just always call me that forever, as I don't find it endearing at all. Was there to be positive about Manny? Not by much, he's still too much is the same thing, whereas Roderick tries to be nice. What do I mean by that? I guess you could say that he is tempted to keep the secret from telling my parents before they figured it out on who I am. Oh well, at least I know Roderick tried before going back to normal. Anyways, I'm about to run out of pages in the notebook, so I guess this is the end. That's probably the longest I've read on this channel, so make sure to like and subscribe. Please subscribe, and tell me what to read next, and just subscribe. And yeah, subscribe and watch another video if you guys want. Peace out.